the final of the three, Sunset. Everybody welcome to Sunset Power Rankings. And I'm going to make it quick. I'm, I'm going to play producer. I'm here with Don and Mug. Hello. Hello, PBO. And Don, take it away. Okay, so before we get too far into this, I just want to preface. Uh, the teams that are on the lower end of the rankings, we don't want you to think your teams are bad. That's not the case. It was a tough draft this season. Um, and most people end up ended up happy with what they got. We didn't see a whole lot of grace movement. Um, and so I guess with that, uh, let's just get right into it. Uh, at number 14, we have the Salt Lake Salandits. Mug, you want to get into a little bit about uh, this team, its strengths and weaknesses? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So first off, the strengths, it's definitely its speed tiers, right? We go from 121, 115, 110, 118, 106. Um, so those five, top five is really good. However, my biggest concern is after 106, we go down to 85 with uh, Suicune. And Suicune is not running max speed very often. And then you go down to Cloister, which because of its speed tier, wanting to shell smash often in the time, you don't really have much of a speed here after the 106. So your top end is very, very good. And like a rock being 110 is kind of fake because you oftentimes want to just be bulky anyway, um, just to live that hit. Because you're, you know, if you're naturally outspeeding something, you know, you're going ham. And with a cellar rock, you don't care. However, my biggest concern is after that 106 mark with an Amorous, you are basically playing with base speeds and with a very slow Pokemon. After that, my biggest concern, like, I don't know how you feel about it, is the uh, what takes a Moonblast, right? You, you have breaks in, and after that, if you if you bring breaks into a game, fine, but you, you t nothing switches in on a Moonblast from a Pokemon or a Play Rough, and that's not a good sign. Uh, yeah, and on top of that, if we start looking at this uh, defensive profile a little bit more, you start realizing that there aren't really any sturdy ground resists either. You have two immunities right, in Enamorous and Azel, but neither of those guys want to be taking hits from any coverage move that a ground type is packing. Um, like, really, it, uh, if they catch you on a prediction uh, with, their, with that on a move that isn't Earthquake, those mons are probably dying, and both of these mons are, like, so important to this team's offensive plan that losing them on a prediction like that is so detrimental. And so not having uh, a resist to ground or fairy really makes this team uh, a little bit on the weaker side defensively. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I think this team is going to want to be playing all offense, but if people are going to go see any speed tiers and say, well, if I can't outspeed it, I can just go full bulk because they're not trying to, they don't have to really worry about trying to outspeed anything in the middle tiers. So you're going to be fighting, like, uh, Salentis is going to have a uphill battle of, they don't have much of a defensive profile and they're going to fight teams that are just going to run a lot of bulk, which is also weakens their offensive profile. I definitely think this team can do uh, do some damage, especially because, I mean, their top end is really strong. However, I am very concerned about how they play around um, pivoting, right? Like, a, a person who pivots uh, with like, with really good pivoting, I do feel like Slanted's going to slowly just bleed out. Um, this team also kind of has a bit of a lack of hazards and hazard control. Uh, it has it has a couple rock centers. It has Azelf, it has Suicune, it has Golurk. Um, all of which are like fine rock setters, but there there aren't any spikes, which is kind of annoying. And um, okay, I, I said lack of hazard control. I was wrong. There's a cycle czar. I'm blind. Um, so in that aspect, it's it's like it's strictly okay in those regards. Mm -hmm. Now, as for the Terra captains, Terra Brakeson uh, kind of feels like a meme to me. I know it's not to uh, to this coach, but I know like Terra Brakeson isn't something that's typically thought of as good like at all. Um, Alolan Muck. Another pick that, like another Terra pick that's just not very conventional. Like Alolan Muck on its own as a standalone Mon, phenomenal Pokemon. But as a Terra captain, it's a bit of an unconventional choice because it just, it doesn't, Terra doesn't really give it any more options that it didn't have before. And Terra that brings us. a really good type. Yeah, that's, yeah, very true. It has a very good type. But that brings us to the final, and in my opinion, the, the, the very key Terra captain here being Cloister. Now, I've heard a lot of I've heard a lot of talk the last few seasons about Terra Cloister potentially being a problem. It's a it's a shell smasher with a skill link and ice school spear and rock blast and pin and missile and all that stuff. Uh, and we just haven't seen it get any usage. And now we're finally gonna see it get put to the test. And uh, it's gonna hopefully it's going to be one of the 
the big cleaners on this team. I can see a way a game, uh, a good game going for this team being breaking with like Specs Enam or Specs Kelio, and then cleaning with either uh, Lycan or a Shell Smash Boyster. Um, and that's kind of how a game wants to be going. And also, I did just realize I said there's no spikes on this team. Um, it has Cloyster. Cloyster gets spikes, but on, on a team like this, I really don't think Cloyster wants to be clicking spikes anyways. So I kind of just like wrote it off in that regard. Yep. It might bring it one game. We'll see. Like, it's not. Yeah, it's maybe, not why you brought it's, it's, it's not, not why reliable. you brought Cloyster. No. Or like, yeah, it, it's not what it wants to be doing. It is reliable. It's just not what it wants to be doing. All right. Uh, and with yeah, that, uh, we'll good. move on to the next team. The number 13 spot going to the Clonbrook Kyogres. Uh, now, they were um, a Stargazer player. Uh, they fill in Stargazer, I believe, right? No, they were just full on Stargazer, but they came and uh, they missed draft, but they were able to put something together. They were demoted into this season, into the sunset, and this is what the team we got. Yeah, um, this team, it's another team where speed tiers are an interesting thing. You have Regieleki at 200, which like isn't an actual speed tier, as we all know. It's fast, but it's not forcing your opponent to prep anything for its speed. There's Sneasler, which has a legitimately phenomenal speed tier, 120. And then it goes from 120 all the way down to 86 with Rotom Heat. And then there are 285s in Archaladon and Rillaboom. And then down to 65 with Aloe. And which so basically... Probably... A lot of things are going to be able to run out of or max HP yeah. against this team. And that it's 65 going to be really speed tier is oftentimes fake because you're probably wanting to go min speed aloed so you can slow flip turn. And exactly. everything else is not running speed. So you are basically going from 120 to 86, 85, and then no speed tiers. And that is a huge red flag. Yep. And this is another and... team where Moonblast resists are kind of a problem. Uh, yep. Sneasler. Like, it, it's neutral. It, it, it's a poison type that doesn't resist Moonblast. Uh, Archaladon, it's a steel that doesn't resist Moonblast. And then that, that leaves you with Rotom Heat as your only real option for uh, resisting those fairy moves. And Rotom Heat is a good fairy resist. I will give it that. But if it's if it has too much on its plate for some games, it's really going to start struggling in that regard. Like, basically, every time there's an offensive fairy, Rotom is most likely going to be forced into spit F that game. And that means now, in almost every game, Rotom is just your catch-all fairy uh, fairy wall, right? And so now, Rotom can't do half the things it wants to be doing. Yeah, and not only that, but not just the fairy problem, but um, your only ghost resist is a knackle stack. And your only dragon resist slash immunity is Deancey. So outside of these few Pokemon, you... you... People can just free willingly spam moves into this person, right? If they if they come in a game where they have like a a player goes Draco Meteor into this team and they didn't bring Deancey, they have no fear. They just click the button and you know let God take the wheel. And same thing with Shadow Ball. There's not there's not going to be a lot of games where you know you're going to want to always bring uh, Knuckle Stack. So you're just going to click Shadow Ball or Bitter Malice or whatever you know Ghost move. And you're going to be perfectly fine with that. There's nothing to stand in the way. Not, like, there's no resist. There's nothing, um, you know. Yeah, there's no weaknesses, but that doesn't matter if you can just click the move and just, you know, relax. I, uh, I'm i very concerned about Climbrooks's, um I mean, it has strong defensive Pokemon on the slower speed tiers, and even its faster Pokemon like Rotom and uh, Archaladon. There they are, you know, they're, they're forces we reckon with. They are tanky. Uh, Rillaboom is nothing, you know, it's not absolutely squishy. You can take a hit or two. But my concern is that, like, how do you win out games with this team? You know, you're not the, you don't have the best hazard setters. You don't have the, you know, your only real breakers are physical. And then our Chaladin, who might just go body press with Draco Meteor or Flash Cannon. So you, you, you're very one-dimensional on your break, or like on your breaking or winning potential. And then your defensive potential is very, very slow and also abusable. Um, and are very also like your defensive profile is also just one note. Like your Sableye is your only tricky Pokemon. Everything else does the exact same thing every single game. Sulky for Knuckle Stack, Flip Turn Wish for Alamomola. Um, Deancey will probably just go Diamond Storm, and then oh, Diamond's okay. No, I, I don't. I want to you know apologize. Um, Deancey is such an insane Pokemon. I think Deancey is actually a really good and key Pokemon here. My concern is that. Like other teams before and after Clombrook, is that Cleonce is going to have a lot of weight on its shoulders, and it's such a it is a good Pokemon. I don't think it can do everything though, not for this team at least. 
Yeah, I think on this team in particular, Deancey's going to be a uh, pinch and hold and do a, a much, much more of a, a support role on this team. Whereas it normally wants to be that kind of offensive role or setup sweeper role uh, because it's usually a Terra captain. Um, on this team, Deancey isn't Terra. It's the it's the Mudsdale, it's the Knackle Stack, and it's one other thing, I believe. No, uh, oh, Deancey is Terra. I'm sorry, it is Terra. So it's Terra Steel, it's Terra Water, and it's Terra Fairy, which means Terra Steel Deancey actually does give them one more fairy resist, which I will give them that. And since it's Terra Fairy, um, it is actually going to be filling more of that offensive role, I apologize. Um, which could be very nice in terms of breaking or cleaning for this team, because it was kind of lacking a little bit of that before. Yep. Uh, but on the other side, uh, Deancey is this team's only spike setter, meaning... If this team wants spikes in any matchup, it'll kind of be forced to do that on Deancey. And in my experience, Deancey is a little bit lackluster as a spike setter because it ends up feeling really passive in that role and it gets set up on and really taken advantage of. Yep. However, I will give this team one major kudos compared to uh, the team that came before it. And that is that this one actually has a, uh, a, a very, very strong offensive core that has seen a lot of usage elsewhere. And that is Rillaboom, Archaladon, Sneasler. Yep. Together, these three form an extremely potent grassy terrain offensive core. And they can be really hard. It's really hard to break the Archaladon. It's really hard to stop the Sneasler. And it's really hard to stop Rillaboom from doing what it does in supporting the team. And in that in that regard, uh, this team does have a definitive game plan going into most games. It's to get up that terrain. It's to get in that Archaladon and, uh, and like kind of break things a little bit. Maybe go two for one and then bring out Sneasler for an unburdened endgame. And in that aspect, I really like the ideas behind the team. Yep. I just i am concerned about Cornbrook being insanely one-dimensional. Like, a lot of its mons have basically one, maybe two ways of playing. And, you know, some of these topper, upper-tier teams might have a easier time of just, you know, managing it. However... I don't want to sound all doom and gloom for Clambrook. I definitely think he's going to sneak out some wins. This team definitely has a, pil a capability of just, you know, running away with a game off turn one, off turn two, and just, you know, ending the game before it even started. So I definitely think it has pot high potential. I just got, I wonder how Clambrook is going to pilot the team. All right, and with that, we're going to move on to our number 12 team being the Bagons, the Baton Rouge Bagons who have the, the the sand team in Neon this time around. <laughs> and now this team, unlike the others before it, have actually some really solid speed tiers going on here. Yep. Uh, being uh, like 125 to 110 is extremely solid. Uh, 110 to 100 to 88 to 85 to 80, or 8 to 85 is fake, it's a Gligar. 88 to 80 is good. And then from there, it starts slowing down at a really at a pretty reasonable pace. So like, I can't be mad at the way it goes down there. But if I had to describe this team in one phrase, it would be it's kind of having an identity crisis. Yep, absolutely. I uh, like, I, I think it's okay. I I, I like the idea cool. of sometimes splashing weather on a team as a whole. Like you know maybe not going full commit. Like especially in a sun team, a team that just has so happens to have a sun team or as a sub identity. And it seems like Bagon's tried going with that with the idea of like, all right, we're just gonna have T Tar plus Excadrill, and then that's the core. But then there's so much clashing identity, like there's so much clashing ideology with uh, Bagon's team that really goes against uh, the Titar and Excadrill pick, that if they weren't there and they were two other Pokemon or two different ideas, that uh, Bagon's team would look a lot better. Uh, yeah, um, I think another thing that really needs pointing out on this team is this is Sand and there is a Dragonite. <laughs> I yes. cannot think of a worse partner for Dragonite, unfortunately. Because Dragonite already wants to be running boots a lot of the time if you're not using it off of lead. It can't be boots and safety goggles at the same time, which is yep. really unfortunate unfortunate for the Dragonite here. Unless it decides to run Interfocus, which is an actual ability. Yep. But um like a lot of this a lot of this team in my mind has what I like to think of as bait mons in draft. I think the core of Tyranitar Excadrill is pretty bait in draft. I think Volcarona is a really bait mon, at least in, in Paldea decks. 
because Volkronic doesn't really have a niche that it's filling all the time. It's it's pretty iffy defensively. Uh, it's not quite enough offensively anymore because it's a little bit too one dimensional. And then I'm going to be in a massive minority for this. I know, and I'm prepared for the backlash. But I also think Dragonite is somewhat of a bait mod. <laughs> After getting done with using a, a season after of Dragonite and even winning games off of Dragonite, I find that Dragonite often comes down to winning off a of bad prep from the opponent more than anything else. And that's not to say that, you know, uh, Bagons can't make great use of it. And, you know, Bag Dragonite does have a lot of cool different sets, but I don't want... I feel like, yeah, I think a lot of these Pokemon... Also, uh, I know it's a bit of subtangent, but a lot of Bagon's threat is physical, right? It's it's It does have special threat in Kilowatt, Glaceon, and Volcarona. But like you just said, and you brought up, Volcarona doesn't really like... Um, you know, isn't the greatest, and does also doesn't really fit... Because it doesn't... Well, it doesn't have multi-scale. It does have the same issue, where you... It wants to run boots, obviously. But then you are shipping down away its longevity. And where... Longevity is the one biggest issue of Volcarona, and why it is such a hard Pokemon to utilize is because it is not, you know, a Pokemon that sits around for a long time. I find that you're really just running with Kilowattril and Glaceon, which, by the way, when all three of your special attackers are all weak to rock in some capacity, um, 25%, 25%, 25 and 50%, respectively, what they will be taking on rocks if they're not wearing boots... And if they're forced to run boots every single game, as and you are on a sand team, you are not having a good time. Yeah, this team, I feel like it, it like like I said before, it's kind of struggling with, with his identity. Uh, it wants to be a sand team, but sand is kind of hurting a lot of its members here. Uh, it's definitely hurting the the Ursaring if it's Eviolite, because Eviolite is to give it more bulk, and now you're cutting into its bulk. And Volcarona, like we said, like. Uh, longe longevity and that like that weak defensive typing is already kind of one of its biggest problems and cutting into that is annoying. Then there's Dragonite, like we said. Um, and then there's like another issue I kind of want to touch on with this team a little bit. Um, and that's that your steel type, your only steel type is Excadrill. That's not something you really ever want. Like Excadr Excadrill is a phenomenal Pokemon, right? Do not get me wrong. But it's not quite bulky enough anymore to be counting as that defensive steel type role that uh, most teams want and need. Same same thing applies to Gligar. That's your team's only ground type, and honestly, I think Gligar is a pretty fake Pokemon. Uh, it it isn't, isn't quite bulky enough anymore. It's too, it's way too passive nowadays. Its earthquakes are bouncing off of things. It doesn't get any recovery, and so it's really hard to justify as a ground type a lot nowadays. I am, um, yeah, I'm not the biggest man. I, okay. But, you know, let's talk about its upbringings. And that is, for what it's got going, when we look just strictly at the sand core of T-Tar plus Excadrill, that is when it gets, when it gets going, and, and especially in the right matchups, it is really, really strong, right? You bring out T-Tar, you get an Excadrill, and either you force out a problem on the opposing side, or you feel like force an answer, or something test is either dying or taking like 60 to 70. And that's assuming, you know, Bagons just plays it nat like um, you know basically by clicking buttons rather than trying to do anything crazy. Not to mention Ogre Pond, right? Uh, Water Pond. It, I do think it's a little um, you know is 170 points maybe uh, is a controversial for Ogre, um, but I think the Pokemon's still worth it, right? You know, you're yeah. You know, this Pokemon has 110 base speed. It uh, Ivy Cudgel is hitting everything like a truck. Water Absorb such a really strong ability. Um, gra it, it can do a lot of things. Kilowattril is decent, uh, has good Terra Captains. So I definitely think, like, when Bagons preps properly, if Bagons preps properly and brings the right team at the right time, I definitely think it can get some wins. It has good Mons. I actually do think that um, sometimes, the you know, the core may be a bit bait or a bit um, counterintuitive, but I do think Bagons has good Pokemon, I just worry that they don't have much synergy, but if he can figure it all out, I definitely think the team can operate, which is why we have it a bit higher than the last two, because even though this team has anti-synergy, unlike the other two, per se, this one just has good mons and good pieces that it should be able to, you know, win some games, do some damage, and, you know, maybe Bagons may come out and surprise us all. I also want to point out 
one more thing about this team before we, before we move on, and that's that I think their Terra captains are honestly some of the strongest in the division right now. Um, Kilowattral is a classic from older seasons with lower tier Terra, and now it has this one has Flying and Ice as its, as its Terra types, and it's going to be hitting everything really hard because people have kind of just uh, they've kind of gotten away from like the scarf and the boot sets, and they've just been leaning into specs. And when you put specs on a kilowattral and then give it Terra flying, the thing hits like a truck, like like a train, right? It hits everything really hard. And then you have uh, Ursaring as sort of an intermediary between bulk and offense as a Terra captain. And with uh, Fairy Water and Ghost, it's really leaning into those defensive uh, capabilities where now it can it can Terra like Swords Dance or or Trailblaze or uh, uh, bulk up. I, I can't remember which that which I said, but anyways, Ursaring is a fantastic Pokemon. Glaceon, a very sleeper Terra captain, but has been putting in work the last couple seasons in multiple in multiple divisions, and people are picking up on it. And this team is a great example of uh, the typings on this Glaceon being uh, Fairy, Water, Ground, and Fire. Yep. So with those typings, it's basically able to hit pretty much everything, and it might even be able to lean into some of those wish-passing capabilities with uh, the Fairy type and the Water type there, yep. uh, being a great defensive uh, catch-all options. I'm an absolute lover of Glaceon. I think it's an absolute steal at 20. I, I'm i one of Glaceon's number one fans. I personally uh, have issue with the fire type on Glaceon, but I'm you know I'm here to be proven wrong. Anytime Glaceon gets used, especially uh, serious ones, I'm all for it. I think this Pokemon is absolutely amazing at 20, especially as a Terra Captain. So, you know, Bagon has my vote in that regard. Um, so I hope he can, you know, really shake... Uh, of the game also azu is a phenomenal mon we haven't even like touched on this thing and it's sitting right in the middle of that roster azu is phenomenal incredible typing incredible ability incredible priority it, it gets it gets everything it needs and this team does honestly play to its strengths it breaks for azu end games and it can break for excavator end games and in that aspect it does work together really nicely all right uh in a now we're going to move on to our number 11 team being the Cherry Hill Bell Sprouts. Now this is our Iron Valiant team for the season. And there are a few things about this team that you might notice when you look at it. First off, like I said, like I said before, there's an Iron Valiant right there. And then there's a Raging Bolt right there, and then there's an Ogre Pond Cornerstone and a Chandelure. And those are your offensive options on this team. That is about it for offense. Valiant's great, don't get me wrong. So is Raging Bolt. I have my opinions on Cornerstone. Um, as well as Chandelure's a Terra Cath, and I think it's like, I'm not sure if Terra provides it much that it didn't have before. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the team has a few things. Uh, Speed Tears. Again, probably going to hear this a lot today. Goes from 110 with Ogre Pond to 80 with Chandelure. Uh... That's not great. If you're not outspeeding Ogre Pond, you can run at a lot of the time on your faster guys. And now all of a sudden, you're really fat against Chandelure. You're fat against the Raging Bolt. You're, uh, then the rest of the team kind of struggles to touch you. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm not a big fan of the Speed Tears. And as someone who is the captain of horrible uh, Speed Tears in their drafts, I this is definitely one of the worst Speed Tears I've seen. Um, like, you know... Everything is just going to either run very bulky or, you know, can, it, it, this team, this is a team that can easily min-max. Like, you know, uh, min -ma EVs are going to be very, like, min-maxed against this person. 110 is very set. 116 is either booster energy or is also probably, like, very, like, it's one-dimensional. Um, so when you are facing pretty one-dimensional speed tiers, also the 80 to, sev 80 to 70 are not that... Um, threatening is because you're not expecting like maybe scarf chandelier comes to a few games but you're th that's about as much as you expect i'm a bit down on the speed tiers but i do want to talk about the positives i do think that it is very strong against the elemental core of fire water electric and grass i definitely think it, it um, doesn't really struggle in any, reg any regard in that uh, aspect even if it has some quad weakness with right on because uh, right on is not really what you're concerned about being hit um it has a really good offensive core with uh, Slowbro and Claude Sire. I'm not the biggest fan of Claude Sire. I actually don't think the Mon is nearly as good as people think. However, I do will give it credit that with Slowbro, Appleton, and Claude Sire are 
uh, Wochen and Corviknight, I think it can take a lot of hits, stall out games very long, to let Raging Bull, to let Iron Valley, and to let Overpond come in and hit hard. However, I do have one major complaint, and it's, uh, I wouldn't say major, I would say minor complaint, and that is that I think Grass is not the strongest type, let alone a type that you want to be doubling or tripling up on and have three Grass types on your team. I think, and it really goes to show how weak this team is to ice. You have two ice resists in Slowbro and Chandelure, and Chandelure doesn't want to be taking ice beams. So you only have one real true ice resist. Now, it is a good one. Slowbro is absolutely a phenomenal ice uh, type. But then you're going to run into the same issue other teams have, where you're going to be pigeonholed because everything else is super effect, super weak to ice or takes it neutrally in Violent and Corviknight's case. Now, I do believe that um, Terra captains are able to fix some of that issue, but I think if you are trying to Terra every single game defensively, I think you're running yourself into a risk of being overwhelmed. And this team, to me, especially feels like you can get either overwhelmed or outvalued by um, opposing teams. Uh, in saying that, it has some of the markings of uh, greatness with its Pokemon. Um, one thing I do want to say about Slowbro being the ice resist is that Slowbro is, in Paladex specifically, it has a, a knack for finding itself getting stuck on the field. Because um, yep. it, it doesn't have teleport anymore. It doesn't have chilly reception like Slowking does. And so it comes in on an ice move, it can't just pivot out anymore. It has to switch out into someone else. And if it can't actually touch the ice type back, it's really not in a good spot. And sure, it gets flamethrower, but it doesn't want to be running flamethrower every game. It wants to be running scald. Or does it get scald? I don't remember it if it gets scald in Paldex. It wants to be, to be running like T-Way, Future Sight, uh, stuff like that. And Ice Beam itself, it wants to be running that to hit like Rast types and stuff that want to come in on it. But flamethrower is like, it, it. It's doable. It's fine, but it's not something it wants to be forced to do every game. And like that's that's not even counting ice as like a coverage type against it because it could just be like an ice move that's not stabbed from something and it's still doing a good thirty percent to slow bro. I also want to yeah. talk a little bit about the Wo Chien. Now Wo Chien, everyone knows that's a PBO favorite right there. But unfortunately, this is not a Terra Wochian. And so you're stuck with that dark grass type thing. Uh, it's still bulky as all hell. It will take nothing from U-turns that are not offensive. It will leech seed up. It will knock things off. It will do what Wochian does. It just won't be doing it nearly as effectively as Poison or Terra Fairy or Terra Water. Stuff like that. Also on top of that, I also want to point out, this team's only hazard control is Corviknight, right? And Corviknight's a really good hazard removal Pokemon. It can get rid of hazards like none other. However, it does it with Defog. And you have a Clodsire with Spikes and Stealth Rock and Toxic Spikes. And you have uh, a Wochian with Leech Seed. I think Defog gets rid of the opponent's Leech Seed. I don't remember. No, it doesn't. Rapid Spin gets rid of your own Leech Seed. I remember now. Yep. Uh, but Ogre Pond sets Spikes. Uh, right on setting Rocks. And so really, all of that progress you're making with the, with half half of the rest of your team, Corviknight's just undoing in one turn if you have to click Defog. Yep. And so that actually makes this team pretty weak to hazard. That yep, I agree completely. Furthermore, uh, furthermore, um, but this team is pretty, uh, it's pretty reliant on on like some late game cleaners offensively, which means it's kind of uh, relying on some of those slower, bulkier guys to make progress in the early and mid game. Like Valiant is most of the time it's a cleaner. Now, of course, in draft, it can be it can do just about anything. That's what Valiant does. Raging Bolt is also usually a, a mid to late game guy. And Ogre Pond, if it's like a, an SD set, it's usually towards the late game. Chandelure can, can do whatever the hell it wants, so I'm not really counting that as one of those late game guys. Um, but most of these offensive guys, they like to be doing late game stuff, but they don't have to. And so I just worry that this team might not be playing to all of the strengths that some of its, some of its members on its rosters might want to be doing. Like, like, uh, <clears throat> I, I think that's a, a big thing about this roster in general. It's not playing to the, to the individual Pokemon's greatest strengths. Like, Clodsire is a really nice hazard setter, but Corviknight's now undoing that. Valiant's a great cleaner, but there's not a lot to get, to get things to that endgame state. 
Uh, Wo Chien is a phenomenal Terra captain, not Terra on this roster. Uh, <clears throat> Slowbro is a great defensive pivot, but now it's stuck being the ice resist for everything, every game. That's kind of the, the common thread I'm seeing. It's not playing into the, uh, the team's greatest strengths. Yeah, I agree completely. All right, and uh, with that, we're going to move on to our number 10 team, being the Orlando Magikarps. That's our guy, Nico, right there. Yep. Now, we love Nico, but uh, this team, this is the Gouging Fire team this season. Yes. There are a lot of iconic, strong Pokemon on this team. There's a Gouging Fire, there's a Scizor, there's a Slowking, there's a Fable, and there's a Hisuian Samurai. These yep. are great Pokemon right here. These are great draft Pokemon right here. But they're kind of lacking the support that a lot of them want some of the time. Uh, Scizor. First and foremost, first thing I notice when I look at this team, the only fairy resists on this team are the Scizor and the Glimmin. Anything with a Specs Moonblast is going to do its damnedest to run through this team with Moonblast. And there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Slowking's like a decent fairy switch in, but it can't do it forever. It can't yep. do it all the time. If it's strong enough, it'll get muscled through. It doesn't resist. That's the big thing. It doesn't resist fairy. And if you have to slap on an AV to lift those fairy moves, now it's not clicking chili reception, which is what it does best. I'm, yeah, so I want to just. For anyone who's thinking that we're over, you were my play favorites, or we're just thinking player diff. Uh, if we were going based off player strength and draft strength, Nico would definitely be higher because I think Nico is a he's really phenomenal player. However, um, yeah, this draft kind of just lets down, and it, it, its speed tiers are kind of fake. Like it's 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 not something that's super um, outstanding. It has very clear-cut weaknesses. It doesn't really want to see rocks on the field, and it doesn't have the best way of getting rid of rocks outside of uh, Toad's Cruel and then Defog on Scizor, which you don't want to be bringing Defog on Scizor, meaning if you want to remove rocks, you're bringing Toad's Cruel, and if you're bringing Toad's Cruel, you're bringing a five-man <coughs> monster. So I'm not super uh, high on Nico's team, and... I'm sure Nico, as a player, will do horrible, dangerous things with this team roster. However, because you're basically pigeonholed into wanting to go Gouging Fire, Samurot, Samurot Scizor, Clefable, Slowking as a five almost every single game for the most part, you really have a hard time with trying to like get a Garganacle in to do Sulkir damage, Toad's Cruel to Rapid Spin, or Tornadus to you know really set up. I feel like you could definitely have picked um, Gone and had a different set of Pokemon. You could have subbed out to Garganacle for a better spinner or a be better Pivotmon. You could have definitely done the same thing with Toad Scroll. And then again, your top end speed tier, one of that 100 speed tier on Toad Scroll is oftentimes fake, especially on the status end. So oh, you're basically running from 111 as your high top end to 91. And that 91 isn't always going to try and be sweeper. And then you're going to 86, 85, and then down to 65. So I really think Nico's team is actually really surprisingly slow, even though you have a Tornadus and Gouching Fire. And you run into the same problem. Like, um, any Pokemon that just has a base 100 or 105 speed tier, you know, is just going to run pretty bulky. It can run Adamant, can run Jolly, and I... Uh, to Timid, rather. And I, it, I think Nico's team has a lot of weaknesses. But... With all of those weaknesses, it has strengths. I can definitely, like, it is absolutely crazy. You have a Gouging Fire, for crying out loud. And Slowking has, you know, the ability to pivot with Chili Reception. I, um... I'm just worried that a lot of your Pokemon are going to have to play the role of two or three Pokemon, which are going to cause a lot of burnout and a lot of, um, overwhelming in battles. Um, I think something that's worth bringing up about this team is the Terra Captains. <clears throat> yep. Terra Captains are the Tornadus and the Rotom Frost. Now, I'm I'm a bit higher on Tornadus and Karnat than most people are, um, because people think this thing has to hit its moves. And it does. It absolutely does, 100%. That's its biggest downfall, in fact. If it didn't have to hit those moves, it would be it would be almost a, a perfect offensive Terra Captain in this in. Um, 
But with Terra flying, it can't just run Terra Blast. And now all of a sudden, it's hitting you with effectively like a base 160 move uh, with the way stab is calculated. And there aren't a whole lot of things that resist flying. Flying is one of the most dangerous, most potent offensive types in the Palvex meta. The only reason you don't hear about it that much is because not many things get super strong flying moves. Uh, it's part of the reason why Tornadus Therian is as strong as it is uh, in Palvex. But that being said, Tornadus Incarnate being uh, Terra Flying or Terra Ground really opens it up uh, as a super offensive menace here. The backup Terra Captain here being Rotom Frost, which I think is a really nice pickup. Uh, it's Terra Steel, so that gives it a secondary Fairy Resist. And it also lets it get rid of the Ice Typing, which is very, very nice on it. Um, and so basically with, with Rotom Frost, you basically just get a, uh, what's it, like a 60-point Pokemon for, uh, with the, the base stats of like Rotom Wash. It's, it's the same base stats, but now it's just a Kintera, and it's like a third of the price, okay, like half the price. And so I think that's a really nice pickup here, too, as well. Um, I do kind of wish, maybe instead of Tornadus, I, I, I did just gas up Terra Captains, but now I'm going to talk about a, another route I think you could have gone. I think if he had made the Scizor a Terra Captain and done Terra Steel and give him that really crazy, crazy strong cleaning up with a SD Terra Steel or Banded Terra Steel Bullet Punch, it might have been more consistent and more effective than Tornadus Rope. But I also, I absolutely understand why he didn't go that route. Now, as for some of the Pokemon on this team that I think fall flat a little bit, it's without a doubt going to be the Garganackle, the Toad's Cruel, and the Glimmet. Now, the Garganackle, Garganackle isn't Terra. It's not allowed to Terra. And that's why I think it's really not a great Pokemon in this format. Uh, it does force prep from your opponent. It forces Covert Cloak. Oak, and maybe it'll force a boost on something, but that's really all it's here doing. And actually, the more I think about it, the more it makes sense as a gouging fire part because, like, one of the biggest things gouging can uh, struggle to break through is those bulky waters. And Garganackle with, with salt here can help get through those bulky waters. And now, if forcing him to be covert cloak, that's one less thing for gouging to worry about when it's cleaning. Uh, but at the same time, if, if, if Garg isn't Terra, all of a sudden waters aren't as afraid of it anymore. Now they can just hit the damn thing. I think Toad's Cruel is also pretty fake, but I think most agree agreement with yep. me on that. Uh, speed tier is fake. It's not great at doing much of any of the support it wants to do, except for it's probably okay at spamming, and it's good at, hits, at spamming knockoff. But in my opinion, that, that's about all it does. And Glimmet is kind of fake. It gets up some hazards, and it dies. Basically, you're bringing it if you don't think your opponent has any kind of decent hazard control. But, like, there are a lot of hazards on this team, right? There is a Samurott, there's a Toad's Cruel, there's a Garganackle, there's a Clefable, and there's a Glimmet. But you know what I don't see? What? I don't see a Ghost type. Nope. There's no Ghost type. So you get, you get those hazards up, right? But they're not staying up. And so it can be really hard for that offensive momentum to start uh, to start mounting. Because you, you get all your hazards if you spend multiple turns doing it. Then they just spin in front of your Toad's Cruel who can't touch it. And now all of that work is gone. And so, like, what was that for? You just lost all that momentum. I don't know. Um, it's weak to I'm Fairy. Not... Like, we talked about that. Is there anything else it's, like, weak to? Kind of fighting. Because yep. Sloking is, like... Sloking is, like, kind of physically bulky. But it's not taking that many CC. Um... Clefable, okay, I, I forgot about Clefable. Clefable's pretty good at it. Um, Tornadus won't do it for long, but basically if, if Sloking and or Clefable get chipped, which is a tall task, by the way, that's, that's I'm kind of nitpicking at this point because I know yep. Nico's a great player. Um, so I'm just kind of nitpicking at this point. So like, if Sloking and Clefable both get chipped or if one of them doesn't come to the game, fighting moves start looking really, really scary into this team, especially if it's like a, a Terra fighting close combat or just like a banded close combat from like a gap dose like a gap dose would kind of run this team right here Absolutely. like especially that one base 100 speed tier it's like domineering now thankfully for nico i'm pretty sure gap dose did not get drafted in sunset 
I so that's one less thing he has to worry about. I think we looked at another team, and it's going to be down the line, that also gets completely and utterly gapped by uh, Galarian Zeptos, and thankfully no one drafted it. Um, yeah, but I do want to say... I think that's most teams that get destroyed yeah, by Yeah, that's Gaptos. fair. Uh, Nico actually has a another issue, and that is... So he has a bulky water in Soul King, which is fine. However, Nico has an uh, as unique... Well, I won't say unique, but, but it has an issue where it does not want to get scolded. Right, like its only actual squall scald answer is sloking. And when you have when when you get to the point where what is your X answer? It's sloking. When you get what's your Y answer? It's sloking. When's your Z answer? It's sloking. When you're what's your one answer, two, three answer, three answer? It's sloking. You're you're going to be like it. It can only do so much because otherwise no, nothing wants to take a scald right outside of like because you know well, Fable. Is to well, it. Fable can also take scalds by virtue of magic guard. Right? Yes, and like, it it's, won't get it's pretty bulky. Like, it, it won't take offensive ones, but most offensive waters are clicking like Surf and Hydro Pump anyways. So like yes. Scald is mostly the, the defensive tool nowadays, and if it's purely for defensive purposes, Clefable can handle it just fine, I think. I, I guess. Uh, you know what, you're right. I, I'm just concerned that... Because like, your actual, your only other water resist is <laughs> um, Hammer Rot, and if you... You know, Clefable might be able to take the burn... But, like, yeah, I guess an offensive, like, I still think if you're still taking 30% on the Clefable and you're forced to go Magic Guard, then you're not unaware. And I definitely think you're still, I still think you find yourself in the pigeonhole, right? Where you're, like, you're, you're, you're too much is reliant on Slow King and or Clefable. But top end is really good in uh, Rotom Frost as a Terror Captain, Hammerot that can set up uh, spikes with ease, and then obviously gouging fucking fire. Yeah, I, we, I know we, we, we kind of spent a while here hammering up weaknesses, which, to be fair, we've been, we've been doing it, that to all the teams. Um, that, that's yeah. kind of what I think, at least I specialize in finding. Um, but this team will absolutely win games to 100%. Like I said, Tornadus, Demon Terror Captain. I know some people don't like it. I do. I believe in you, Nico. You will make Tornadus great. Great. Um, gouging fire. We all know gouging just can dominate games in a single turn, one move, and that like, just changes the course of a game. Scizor is a certified hood classic. It, it's definitely going to win games, 100%. No doubt in my mind. Yep. All right. And with that, I think we're, we're going to move on to our number nine team, the New York Nickets. <clears throat> now, this was the, uh, the, the, Sorry, the Neon runner-up last season. He came in second place. His team was absolutely incredible last season. It was, uh, what was it? It was Enamorous Backscalibur. It had, oh, I don't remember yep. what else it had. It had, an, it had an Enamorous Backscalibur. Like, like the, that, that's enough said, right? Like, <laughs> does anything else need to be said? But now, now this team, I think his team is a little bit weaker than it was last season, unfortunately. Um, yep. The top three or top five even, I think, are actually phenomenal Pokemon. Not only that, they synergize well. Uh, especially, in my opinion, Golden Go Garchomp is, like, one of the most potent uh, flex cores in Draft League. And yep. what I mean by flex cores is that, like, both of them can pretty much do anything on a game-to-game -game basis. And that's really, really nice. Because this team puts a lot of pressure on them. I'm going to get into that in just a little bit. I, uh, um, I actually like how Deoxys speed actually has a bit of weight off its shoulders because, and same thing with Garchomp, okay. I think there's a bit of an unsung synergy between Deoxys speed and Garchomp because Deoxys, you can set up hazards, letting Garchomp to be more versatile or vice versa. If you want to try a more nasty plot or set up, or sweeping set or more offensive set of Deoxys speed, but you still want to get, you know, that residual chip in, you have the Garchomp. So I think they have some that's an unsung hero. And then obviously a really strong glue piece between the two of them of Golden Go. And then I think the rest of the team works really well with, you know, trying to, you know, with that game plan. I would agree. Um, I think Mandibuzz, I'm a big Mandibuzz fan, uh, as well as Hattery. Like, th those are two very solid, like, mid-tier picks. Mid-slash-high-tier. It's not quite mid-tier yet, in my, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and Deoxys Speed, I'm a bit of a Deoxys Speed hater myself, but it did get moved down in points this season, so it's absolutely a lot more draftable this season. Um... Number one weakness I see when looking at this team, Moonblast. Uh, we've been saying this a lot for a lot of teams, all right? 
Moon, the, there are two Moon Blast resists on this team. There is Flareon, which, spoiler alert, it's a Terra Captain. So if it's coming, it's not going to be a Fairy Resist. And then there's Golden Go. And Golden Go, while it is it is the Flex guy, it is the Flex Demon. If it face if it's facing down a strong Moon Blast, a lot of the time it's going to be running those bulkier support sets. And so now immediately, just by virtue of Golden Go being your only real reliable fairy resist, it's already pigeonholed a little bit in a lot of matchups. I think that's really dangerous for a team like this, where Golden Go and Garchomp are really some of your only main breaking guys, if that makes sense. I'm, um, I also have an issue where I like the top core, like the top five looks really good. Even Vaporeon, like the top six all look really good. I think they're a really strong, simple Pokemon. Superior, I'm not the biggest fan in Paldea, uh, Paldea decks. And then after, but even when you get, even if you move past the Superior and just say whatever, the last three picks are just not it. I don't like the Frogadier. Flareon is fine if it's like your one of your only filler picks, so your other picks were better. But you really oftentimes don't really want to be bringing it into battles. So you're left with Frogadier, which is not a real pick, or Flareon, and then your one and only Rapid Spinner being Hitmonchan, which isn't something you really want to be doing or even bringing as a Pokemon. You're not having a good time if someone wants to set up your own hazards. Obviously, you have Magic Bounce, but if hazards get on the board or like a strong Pokemon with Heavy Slam comes into the game or whatnot, I feel like, and because Hatterene doesn't have a reliable recovery outside of Decus, I definitely think Nickets has a lot of pressure for hazards, because, hazard removal rather, because otherwise it's Defog, which gets rid of your top three guys' progress, and then Hitmonchan, which relies you to bring, well, Hitmonchan. I'm, um, uh... Yeah, I've... Peop, some people have heard me talk, talk about Hitmonchan before. I'm not a fan of Hitmonchan, and at 70 points, I think it's a little bit criminal. This is just not a mod I would ever pick. Um, I can understand why you would, I guess, but I don't know. I feel like like it, it seems kind of crazy on paper to say this team struggles with hazard control because there's a defogger, a magic bouncer, and a rapid spinner. How are hazards ever going up against this team? And then you realize, well, wait a second. Almost every game they're going to be trying to bike stack with Garchomp and Deoxys and or Deoxys speed, and therefore... The Mandibuzz is not going to be wanting to click defog. And uh, on on looking at looking at it prepping, if I'm using this team with prep, and I see some hazards, I'll be like, okay, if they they won't bring hazards into me, I'll bring defog anyways just in case. But if they if they bring hazards, I'll just click defog. It's not a big deal. And then when you actually get in the game, you click defog, and you're like, wow, I just undid all of my own. Progress. <laughs> and then Hatterene, uh, it's a it's a good match bouncer. But it's not quite bulky enough to want to be bringing in all the time on those hazards because if you guess wrong, if you predict wrong, and you get hit by a strong physical move, you're taking 40%, and now you're getting outsped, and you're probably taking the rest of their 60%. And it yep. can just it can be it can be really tough at times. I'm also on the superior fraud watch train. I'm not quite convinced it's bad yet, but I'm very wary of it. Uh, I, I don't think it's good. I don't think it's like a, a phenomenal Terra Captain. I just don't think it's, uh, it's terrible quite yet. And I would agree. I, I don't think Frogadier is ever coming to game. And if it is, it's probably just going to want to click spikes. But the thing about that is you already have two of the best spikers in the game. So like, why would you ever need to do I that? I guess it's there for toxic spikes. Like, <laughs> I guess. Speaking of toxic spikes, uh, this team does not have a grounded poison. Which is nope. very annoying because Garchomp does not want to get toxic or does not want to get poisoned. Vaporeon doesn't want to get poisoned. Hattery doesn't want to get poisoned. Superior doesn't want to get poisoned. There, I would love it, but that's besides the point. Yeah, um, I think, like, if instead of Frogadier you had, like, a grounded, like, a 20 point grounded poison, like, 
you, if you want to go 10 points and go something like Swalot, but like I think there's Pokemon like Area Dose down there and things of that nature, right? Then you get Toxic Spikes and then obviously Sticky Webs. And I'm saying if you're looking at the bottom of the barrel, like I definitely think there's definitely a better Pokemon that if you're trying to bring Frogadier for either Hazards or, you know, whatnot, or T-Spikes, you definitely could have just gra drafted a Poison type, a 20-point Poison type that gets T-Spikes. That way you at least have something to absorb the spikes. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's the best solution, but I definitely think it would have been better than, say, having a Frogadier. Yeah. Anyways, one more thing I want to touch on with this team before we move on is your only real reliable physical guy is Garchomp, right? Like, like Flareon exists, right? But it's not coming into every game, especially when you have Superior as your other character. Sure, Hitmonchan exists, but it's clearly on the team as the utility roll to click, uh, rapid spin, and maybe a knockoff once in a while. I think it gets that in Battle Decks. Um, but my point being, Garchomp is the only real physical guy here, and that can be a struggle for a lot of reasons, a lot of very obvious reasons in your offense. And so once again, that's pigeonholing it every game. I think the biggest weakness of this team, from what I have seen, is that it has two of the most flexible guys around, but the rest of the team around it is kind of forcing them into specific scenarios of every game. And that, and so like it's taking those those greatest strengths that they have, and it's not capitalizing on them to their fullest. I agree. But I, I don't want to end it on a bad note. The like we said before, I don't want to downplay the fact that the first six, maybe even seven mods really are a very strong top four. And the, it like again, it'll definitely win games. They keep saying this for teams, but like I, I believe it, they will win games. I don't think teams are going zero and eight. Uh like they're they're gonna win games. Yep, I completely agree. All right, and with that, we're gonna move on to our number eight team. Welcome to the halfway point. We have the Snow Point Temples Door was. I am and this team. I'm going yeah. to have to leave it to you and Soaring moving forward. I got to go. I, I've overstayed my welcome. Okay. That's why I've been mentally collected the last guy. I got to go. All right. Best of luck. Snowpoint is a team that I do not like. So good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Harsh final words from Mug. Um, anyways. <laughs> Run it up. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to ask you to tap in a little bit here, Soaring. For sure. Um. Yeah, I still want to do this all on my lonesome. Anyways, this team, it has a lot of good Pokemon on it. A lot of, like, generically good Pokemon. That's not a bad thing, right? Like Greninja, Iron Treads, Petra, Moltres, Ogre Pond. Those are all classically very good and very strong, right? And then, then you can throw Jolteon into that as well. That's a solid six right there that can come to and dominate most games. Iron Leaves. This is going to be a controversial terror cap to a lot of people, I bet. Yeah, I... I Most people I, think I, Iron Leaves... I, I, I've heard this thing is pretty fraudulent, so I, I'm excited to see what he even has a chance to do with it. Under normal circumstances, I would agree with you. I okay. would say Iron Leaves is a fraudulent Pokemon. Look at that typing. Yeah. These are not normal circumstances. Brother, this thing can terra. <laughs> it no longer has that shit-ass typing. Okay. Does, what, does this thing have... Oh, one okay Doesn't massive what? downside to this i believe they didn't give this thing uh the fighting type as a terra type oh okay I believe they, they gave it yeah they give it electric and fire which is very strange to me i think you give this thing fighting all of a sudden it has a reliable psychic physical psychic stab in side blade which like there aren't many good <laughs> physical fight uh, psychic moves like there's psychic fangs but that has pretty limited distribution yeah. Anyway. Um, if it just Terra Fights and clicks Sword Stance, it has a good enough speed tier where it's going to be able to just clean up a lot of things with CCT if it's Terra Fight. I think Terra Fight Iron Leaves is a terror. Unfortunately, it's not Terra Fight, so I'm going to stop talking about it as if it were. Being Terra Electric, I think, is pretty redundant. There's a Jolteon on the team already. It's doing that. Um, Terra Fire, I understand, I guess. You, you, you don't want to get burned. You want to be able to click SD. And that's totally cool, totally normal. You have a Moltres, like, already. And, like, it's not always doing the offensive fire thing, but it's strong enough to be able to. It has 125 special attack. I don't know. I just feel like these Terra types are a little bit redundant, uh, at the very least. 
Yeah, but I mean, I mean, I, think, I mean, people have been known to take advice from these power rankings, so uh, I, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure Snowpoint, you know, I mean, young. Snowpoint, Snowpoint thought he had the best draft. Mug don't think so, so we'll see if he changes it to a uh, fighting Terra. Yeah, I, we'll I also out. don't agree uh, with this being the best draft on the board. Not to say it's a bad draft, I don't think that's true at all, but I think this, for all the good mons that this team has. There's a fraudulent mon to back it up. Right? <laughs> yeah, like Moltres. <clears throat> I've never seen that mon ever. No. Whoa. Pause. Moltres I've never seen go. this mon used. Is it good? Is it like It's that? incredible. It's flame. Ever since it got boots, it's been like OU. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Like, okay. That shit, that shit gets flame body. It's, it's the U-turn Punisher. It's mm. also like one of the only enamorous checks because it exists last Earth Power and Mystical Fire. Um... Anyways, I think Mimikyu, uh, certified fraud, at least in Gen 9. This guy's nerf was really, really huge. Um, and now it's like, it's not like your team needed a ghost type, right? And Mimikyu's not bulky enough to be your, your good fairy type. It's like, it's oh just, it's not god. really doing that much here. He so many ghost right? types. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's got, yeah, he's got three ghost, three ghost <laughs> type. One of which, uh, probably should never come, realistically. <laughs> the other one, realistically... Should never come. Yeah, and the other yeah. one's Petra. Um, <laughs> the other one's is the goat Petra. And the other, the other one is the certified goat Petra. Um. Okay, I think I think Mimikyu is not. I think Ditto is pretty fake. It's not fake, but it's kind of troll, I guess. Is what I'm yeah. trying to say. It's uh, forcing Croak? you to reflect on yourself, <laughs> I guess. Toxic Croak, you paid like 60, 70 points for that guy. Nah, it, it, at this point. In Gen 9, it's a base stat issue. Toxicroak has like 102 attack, and that's the highest stat. It's a little bit desperate nowadays for Toxicroak enjoyers. Like, I like Toxicroak as a Pokemon. That guy's the Ranbath goat. This isn't Ranbath. This is draft. People can plan for it now. It's it's just not hitting quite the same, especially with it not being Terra. Uh, it's just it's not as great anymore. That being said, it has a good six or seven mons that can come almost every game reliably those mons are very good one thing i would worry about in that though is that there are there's kind of a lack of breakers greninja usually wants to be clean with battle bond and so it's usually gonna be staying in the back until the end game treads is that it can be a lead it can be a pivot it can be a can be an offense but again it does so much other things you don't want to be pigeonholing it into those offenses every game it can't do it all the time reliably sure it can do it once in a while absolutely but not all the time. Petrarun's that bulky pivot. Moltres tends to be that bulky pivot, uh, but it can be offensive. Again, it, it's about not wanting to pigeonhole thing. You want it to be able to keep that utility, and so treating it solely as a breaker is just not uh, accurate, in my opinion. Yeah, unless you he's, give... yeah, unless he's playing to like play a super long game every game just to whittle everything down with Petrarun, Treads, and <laughs> really whatever else he wants to do, <clears> and just break with Greninja and Jolchan late game, just fast hitters. I don't really say I was getting yeah. through. I mean, set of Mimikyu, I guess. Sure. I don't know. I think Leaves can absolutely be a breaker. Ogre Pond can be a breaker, as we know. Jolteon can be a breaker. Um, I'm listening up all these all these things that can be breakers, and it's not that they are breakers, if that makes sense. So, like, basically, for this team to be making progress in a game, it's going to have to start getting a little bit creative. Um, hazards. There's a lot. There's there's a rock setter in Treads, right? Um, past that, you have one rock setter, I believe, and one spike setter. And I don't know if either of your poison types get T spikes. I, they I might. I don't. Know. I, I don't think Petra does. Toxic Pro might. I can check the spikes on. I I think I I like to think Toxic Pro gets get spikes, but um, but so like your hazard game's pretty weak. So like your your passive damage on a team that's already kind of like positioning based team isn't very high. But like the I I think the the top the the six best guys on this team or the, the seven best guys on this team are really going to be able to carry this team to victory victory in a lot of matchups. like this team I I do not have any worry about it, it getting wins uh, the coach being confident in, in its abilities I absolutely understand that uh, I good. can respectfully disagree on some of the reasons good but that doesn't change the fact that I think it will 
strong yeah. team at the end. Snow point, I'm gonna say this from a place of not knowing mons. Whenever I see a ditto and an illusion mon, I kinda I kinda get like a meme feel from it. Just off I'm like, ah, this guy's gonna go for some meme type of plays. <laughs> I don't know if he's really I don't know if he's really about that. So I'm hoping to see the rest of the team really shine. Cause like I'm mean, just forces prep is what I've heard. So yeah, that, that, and, that and is true. Seeing, and seeing an illusion mode, yeah, an <laughs> illusion mode, a ditto, and a disguise mode. <laughs> it's it reminds me of a ditto is Sui and Zora, and like uh, fucking I don't know, like a Glossopod with emergency exit on the team. I don't know. It feels like yeah, memes. Yeah, yeah, and then like a Blissey thrown up. <laughs> yeah, some odd, this odd team. So I'm I'm glad you're confident in it, and I, and I hope to see it thrive. That's that's it. That's all I, 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 that's it. <laughs> I, I don't think you're wrong to be confident in it either. Yeah. That would be able to be a lot of teams. Um, oh, one thing I do want to talk about. Uh, there's no there's no Moonblast spammer fairy on this team. Like, your fairy type is Mimikyu, and it's kind of switching in and taking a hit and popping that disguise. And it's kind of it's kind of weak. It's not like putting on a lot of immediate pressure. Um, speed tiers are phenomenal on this team. Uh, speed tiers are very, very nice. The 130 to 122, the 110, 106. Very, very, very nice speed gaps. The uh, only thing, I guess, is that your lowest actual speed tier is 70 with a Sui and Zoro. Which, good. like, maybe even is, like, a tad bit too fast. Even. <laughs> like, if there's that's anything right? that's, like, slower than that, they're never, ever going to have to run an ounce of speed. And that is, like, kind of crazy to think which does limit your your ditto capabilities because as a ditto you want your opponent to be running speed so you can pass too. Um, but I don't know. <clears throat> it, it's it's probably very very minor like an interesting thing at that. But you know it's just a thought I had. But I guess with that and so because of that it falls squarely at number seven. Wait, I went out of order. <laughs> did you? No. I did. I skipped one. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. Classic. PBO I apologize. Toronto, Tottenham, you were number six. I read the list wrong because the team at number seven is actually also starts with T.O. Oh my god. That yeah. would be I also the Toronto missed Star Raptors. <laughs> so, Tottenham, you're I number apologize. six. We're going to go back to Toronto. <laughs> yeah. I also did the list put up in front of me. Apologies. And this team right. also has... <laughs> this is the number seven team. I apologize. And the first thing it points out to me, Terra PZ, a Bax, and an Oracorio of every form. Yeah. Keep that in mind. <laughs> I'll tell you what stands out to me. Those first two picks right there. Hell yeah. That's a great Tusk and that's a Baxcalibur. Fuck yeah. The PBO Unfortunately, class. that's where, that's kind of where the offense, like, that's where the physical attack on this team ends. Mm -hmm. Right there. That's where it ends. That's it. Those are your only two physical guys. Not only are they your, your only two physical guys, they also share the same speed tier, which is really, really unfortunate sometimes. And funny. Yeah. <clears throat> There's two seconds there. You're good. I mean, I'm surprised it didn't tear the Sinistra. Probo Pass is also here. I don't know what in the name is kicking the Probo Pass. I'm actually surprised that oh, I guess Porygon Z is a pretty expensive Terramon, which I'm, I love. To, I love to see PZ get some usage. I'm a big PZ fan. <laughs> Everybody knows it. And if you don't, now you know. Probo Pass with the Terras. Oh, are we missing any any big types here? Nope. We got the ground. We got the ground to poison. Got your ground, got your fairy, got your we got, steel. We, we got the fire. Got your fire. Got, got your water. Got your grass. Yeah, we're not missing any big types I will, here. I will say, I think it's a missed opportunity not terroring the Sinister. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a classic one. You probably should terror to be safe. I mean, even I though even though you want to see new terrors, you you want to see new terrors, but unfortunately, this is the case where you gotta you know stick to the old. I think a big issue on this team. This is another team that's fairy weak, right? Your only reliable steel uh, fairy resist is Skarmory. And that guy is not eating a lot. Of this, this is another example of a team where it's being pit, where a, a really key mon is being pigeonholed in a lot of matchups. It's being forced into a certain role. And in this case, it's Skarmory being blasts. Um, 
Skarmory, it takes Moonblast surprisingly well with Spadef. It just doesn't always want to be Spadef. Mm -hmm. So it just makes it really hard for it to be doing what else. Now, if we look at this team again, it, we have Rapid Spin from Great Tusk. We have uh, Defog from Oricorio. It, like, the Hazard Control is looking pretty good on this team. Hazard Setting is another story. You have one one Rocker in Tusk, it's two Rockers in yep. Tusk and Probopass. I was about to say, yeah. Which is, like, okay. And then you have one Spike Setter being Skarmory. Does Dragalchi get T-Spikes? Dragalchi doesn't get T-Spikes. I can check that. It does get T-Spikes, true. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> true statements. Beautiful. Also, if you take PC, just run the Hyper Beam on that shit. Run, r r just, you know, just throw me mm -hmm. a bone. Just throw, just throw me a PC Hyper Beam kill to end off the, the Scarfit Hyper Beam. You know, go all out. You don't gotta tear it. Switch the tear to Sinister. Just make yeah, Portal to get true. Just, I just give uh, me a something I do. Kill. Something I do like about this team is uh, the Spadef mixed with the Fizz Def. Uh, you have Great Tusk, you have Sinistra, and you have Skarmory as mods that are pretty traditionally physically bulky. Um, and then you have Dragalge and Primarina as mods that are pretty stereotypically specially bulky. And together, they're they're working together really well. The uh, the pivoting on this team is decent. You have Flip Turn on Primarina, Flip Turn on Dragalge, Volt Switch on Raikou, I believe, or Corio gets a U-turn. Um, yeah, one of his forms got to. Surely, right? <laughs> it does get U-turned. It yeah. doesn't really run it too often because it's doing the whole um ha, -ha funny um yeah. quiver dance thing. Uh I think Raikou is a very interesting mod. People yeah. give it a lot of flack, right? Yeah. Because it's uh, it's an expensive electric type and there are a lot of cheap electric type alternatives. But I think Raikou stands out among them being uh one of those speed tiers that's actually Important, not just uh haha my electric is way faster than you suck one mm -hmm. um no it's actually it's actually feeling a really important speed tier at 115 and it's unlike a lot of the other electric types that are trying to do its job raikou also is fat and gets a lot of coverage raikou gets scald naturally gets aura spear and shadow ball naturally it is putting pretty much everything it could ever do at least neutrally um and that just makes it really, really strong. I think uh, Raikou, sorry, not Raikou is really slept on Mon. I also think Dragology is really slept on. It could also be a screen setter if you want Raikou to be a screen setter. I haven't seen that done. Very true. <laughs> but yeah, you, you, you can try I, it. You, I, th I, th I, th I think you saw me do that. <laughs> oh, was that you? Okay, okay. I was about to <laughs> well, say. That was me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that was me. Uh, but yeah, Raikou is a good, uh, surprisingly competent screen setter. Like I said, it's fat. It's and it's fast. So you can click, get your screens up, click Volt Switch. I have a bit of HP back, uh, left to do it again. In the um, I haven't talked too much about the back scalibur. Yeah, speaking, because, speaking of behind screens. <laughs> yeah, speaking of behind screens, <laughs> there, there's a back scalibur here, and there's a great test. Now these guys, I'm going to be honest, they don't seem like they work together very well in a traditional sense. I don't really think that matters very. Like, at the end of the day, it's still a Great Tusk and it's still a Backscalibur. They are going to be clicking buttons and getting kills. However, I think Backscalibur is missing some of the uh, some of the support that it would usually like to see. That support that it would usually like to see is Snow. And so, yeah. like, not drafting Snow with Backscalibur, I'm not going to ding you on. All right? Like, you're not forced to use Snow with Backscalibur. Yeah. However, I feel like the pivots on this team... Uh, iffy on actually getting back scalibur in because like let's put it like this back scalibur uh can kind of struggle to hit certain steel types okay. um because earthquake against some guys just is most of like, the vast the vast majority of them it is right don't get me wrong um but the pivots on this team are free marina which yep. doesn't really invite in deals i guess it can if it's like clicking fairy moves that game and then Dragalge, which like super invites in steel types. So if you're flip turning with either of those guys on steel types, and uh, I guess you bring in Tusk in that scenario, so it's not that bad. Um, 
Not to mention, uh, Toronto drafted one of the steals that's better at beating backs anyways, being Skarmory. Um, even, though, even though it's neutral to ice. So, like, it's still, like, he has pieces. He took pieces off the board that would stop the back Excalibur. And so, in that sense, it's supported in, like, an in that makes sense. Yeah. Now, haven't talked about Terra Cathins too much. Yeah. I think Porygon Z is interesting. Speaks for itself. Um, <laughs> if you say so. For, for Porygon Z, that uh, is. Probopass, I couldn't tell you what that thing does. So. Probopass is actually real. Um, okay. Because of Terra. But I'm, PZ so first. Guns, the first. Yeah. The PZ first. Um, ground type, I think, is really nice to hit steel types and rock types. And then Ghost is really, really nice because Ghost hits everything except for normal Ghost. Um, and so it makes adaptability actually usable on this Pokemon rather than it just being a dumb gimmick with uh, it not really working with Terra. Okay. So I think it, it'll actually be really, really, really nice on this Pokemon. Because it already gets Shadow Ball, right? Shadow Ball's a good move. We we know that. Mm -hmm. And I can just put Terra Blast Ground and nuke the uh, nuke anything that's trying to switch in on try attack. That being said, Probo Pass. You ask, what does this thing do, Sorry? Yeah, I don't fucking know. What it does, does, a, does a lot of things. What is it, ZU Mon um, or something? What are we or, doing here? Not a lot of things, but it, it does a couple of things. It, it's a ZU Mon. But it oftentimes Terra Ghosts and can like body press or Iron Defense body press things up. Okay. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, this thing has Terra Bug. Okay. All right. Okay. It might seem kind of weird at first. Yeah. I see the vision. While I, I I can't say I necessarily, I see the vision. Probo Bass is quad weak to fighting and ground. Guess what type resists fighting and ground? Bug. Anyways, I yeah. So so that's why that's why it has bug. I don't quite understand the electric. Maybe he's trying to pull off some magnet rise, no weaknesses shenanigans. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Maybe. Um, I would have maybe liked to see something to play into magnet pull a teeny bit. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe I'm not like sure. Fire, terra fire and terra water are very nice. Terra yeah. fighting could have been okay, but uh, that's also kind of just like a gimmick. Why why terra fight to boost your when you could just tear to iron to boost it even more. Yeah. Um, it's like overall, I, th I feel like this team, it, it's decent. It's good. I will say it's pretty It's pretty slow. I, I haven't touched on the speed tiers yet. I'm actually, uh, the dock we were using ever since Mug left has not been working. So I can't actually see the speed tiers right now. Uh -oh. So I'm just going off my head calcs. It seems to me speed tiers go from Raikou at 115 which is like kind of sure. which which is like 115 is a little bit slow to have to be your fastest guy right you usually want something at least closer to one and after, after that from 115 it goes straight down 90 for oracorio oh okay now and what? that is next? more than 20 points uh i believe it's so actually PZ 90 and i oh know pc's 90 you're right i thought it it is PZ at 90, and then Tuscan backs at 86, and then the rest follow. Not too far behind. Um, but basically, going from 115 to 93 is actually really detrimental, because I've, I've been on this tangent before. I've said it about the 110 speed tier. There are so many of them. Like, almost every team is going to have a, a Mon that's at the 110 speed tier. There are just so many of them. And if you're allowing those Pokemon to go here, let me just test this real quick. Uh, there's one. Can or Rio? Ogre Pond is the 110 speed tier. Yeah, that's, okay. That's a big one. An adamant, an adamant 110 Pokemon does outspeed Oracorio by a few points. Ooh. So anything that's at 110, everything that's at 110, rather, uh, is going to be able to run adamant against this team or modest and just absolutely chunk your bulky pieces like Skarmory and Dragalge and Sinistra and Free Marina 10% harder now. And that's going to be really detrimental. Honestly, the defense, like the longevity of this team is kind of lacking a little bit. You have Strength Sap from Sinistra and Roost from Skarmory, and that is like, you have Roost or Corio. You're barely ever clicking. And then that's, that's it. 
that's your that's your longevity right there. So taking that 10% extra damage is really, really tough. All right. Overall, this team, I think, is absolutely going to squeeze out wins with Bax and Tusk. Like I, like I said before, they don't work perfectly together on paper, but in practice, they're absolutely just putting like overbearing pressure on a team. And with that, that was our number seven team. Yeah. Welcome That's back, Tottenham. Me. Welcome back. Welcome Warm back, welcome. Tottenham. A champ. This okay. team looks fucking this crazy. Team. <laughs> this team. This when when you look at this the team, team this team, you this go, team. I love seeing a, the fairy. T- it just it's this just a lot of luck to be excited about. That has a lot of history behind it. It's got PBO certified goat Rotom wash. Mm-hmm. Iron hands. That's MJ right there. That, that's Michael Jordan. All right. He's got them hands. It's got Quickwavel. It's got Heatran. It's got Latias, Weezing, Galar. And then this is this is a King Gambit team. You don't see King Gambit too often anymore in PBO. Super late. Because we don't, yeah, super late because no one picks it anymore. Uh, no Terra Gambit will do that to a person. Um, <laughs> now, as for this team... I will say its big weakness, uh, as Za would put it, it doesn't have a big guy, right? It it, it doesn't have that it doesn't have that spectre. It doesn't have that valley. It doesn't have that drag. Of, it doesn't have that gouging fire. It doesn't have that tusk. Things like that. Th- this round one is a heatran. That's yeah. that is a road of wash. Like this team, you look at it, it doesn't look like a draft team. It looks like an OU team, which like has good and bad to come with it. Um. Rotom Wash, uh, many believe it's like the reliable glue piece on a team. Having used it twice, I do not share that opinion. Okay. Can't hit a pump to save its life. <laughs> but can't hit a move to save its life. Thunder Wave is, is no exception. Or Will-O-Wisp. Um, I think Heatran is kind of falling off defensively in Paldex. Uh, not that I'm saying I think it's falling off in terms of uh, it's bad. I think it's just not as useful defensively because everything in its mother gets a ground type move. Uh, like it, it is unironically viable sometimes to like mud shot or mud slap to beat this thing. Uh, mud slap is a bit iffier, but point stands. I think where he starts to shine in Paldex is its offensive profile. It's like 130 special attack, maybe I think it's 130. Yeah. Yes, 130. 77. Sp- Speed is like right in that speed spot to make it a really nice surprise start for its coverage is really nice in the dragon type on fire types can't switch in on a dragon pole so like it really does just become this really nice offensive package and it's just it becomes really really reliable in a sense but Quavel, very nice pokemon although i'm not entirely sure how much it's needed here we already have a fighting type in in michael jordan we already have a water type in road of wash I'm not going to ding you on doubling up on water types, all right? Because water types are, are probably the easiest type in the game to, to double up. Um, but Quickwavel is just... I don't know. It, it, it can stumble into sweeps. That's the phrase we use in PBO pretty often. Uh, you can just accidentally sweep with this Pokemon. So I guess that's why it's here. Like, Iron Hands can be the fighting type that breaks, and Quickwavel mm-hmm. can be the one that cleans. A whole lot of thing I, I, also, a lot I see going around is, like, the offensive fire types are hard to come by. Oh, I guess he wanted to take that early because he has the fire water grass core, has the dragon steel fairy, so he's got doubled up on steels and waters. I don't and know I, if I'd count I, Mulligan I, as like a defensive part of a yeah, fire water grass core. It's, know, it's really hard to do that. I'm stretching it with the Terras, and no, I, 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 I and, and very, that's, very, that's very cool. early on when you said that this team didn't have a guy, I think he realized that, and that's why I try to get Gambit just like a high point mon. <laughs> he's like, oh, maybe this can be the guy. After whittling down everything, I get that. Regarding I just feel the like rest of the team, Gambit, without Terra, Gambit isn't really capable of being that guy. Um, it's still good, and it, it, it's another one of the stumble and win at some point. Um, which is which is a big part of the reason I don't, I don't think this team is like another one of those teams that will not go winless whatsoever. It will beat people just by virtue of Gambit basically having a choice band at the end of a game and clicking a sword stance. Um. Now, in terms of mons that are on Fraud Watch, there's a Latias right there that does not have Terra. I think non-Terra Latias is nigh unusable in Paldex. I think it is 
a very, very bad Pokemon. Uh, it can't do the setup things it wants to do because Steel types and Dark types tend to wall it forever because 110 special attack without investment just isn't strong enough for it to get set up and kill things before getting killed. Um, oh, also, this team, there is one change that needs to be made to it. The Spide Ops is not a Spide Ops anymore. It is a Doug Trio. Um, just the, uh, the visuals haven't been updated yet. Anyways, I think where this team starts to fall a little bit short are the Terra Captains. Lilligant is cool, and it will probably be the primary Terra but it's still just a Lilligant. Um, like, Lilligant to me yeah. screams a great secondary Terra Captain. But it's not, but it's trying to fill the role of the primary Terra Captain. It's Terra Fire, Fairy, and Ground. Like, jeez, it's trying to do so much right now. Um, it's just, it's interesting. Bronzong, I'm a big Bronzong, but that's another Terra Captain. I may be a big Bronzong fan, but I don't understand what Terra does for it. It's a little lost on me there. Uh, keeping the Steel type is interesting to me when... You're trying to when it when it's the secondary steel on team with Heatran. I think that's interesting. Yeah, he Dark, could have to I stab on every single one of his. He could stab on every single one of his uh, Terras, and I had to ask him like, me, "Are you like, are you me, sure? Yeah. Like, you don't have to have stab." He's like, "No, I'm gonna stab." I was like, "Okay, whatever works." So I did double check with him on that. And then, quite honestly, I'm not sure what the Doug Trio types are. Um, but Doug Trio is also probably not going to be a super common Terra Captain in the coming games. Now, I think something that's worth talking about with this team is all of his ground resists come from Levitators. Except for the Lilligant, which is, which A, barely counts as a ground resist in the first place, and B, is tearing out of its type anyways. But I will say one thing. Uh, if they start tricking your guys' Iron Balls... Or, like, okay, I guess that works on regular flying types, too. But if, like, a Mold Breaker Pokemon shows up, like, a Mold Breaker Excadrill just spams Earthquake into this team. Does not care. It just gets a kill every time it comes in. Oh, shit, yeah. Things like that. I think not having a reliable poison is also really scary, because uh, Galarian Weezing is... It's not always grounded. It, it levitates. And... <laughs> It, it's just, it's interesting. This team also doesn't have a very strong hazard presence. Like, there's Heatran Rocks, there's Glarian Weezing's, Glarian Weezing's Toxic Spikes, mm -hmm. Bronzong's, and King Gambit's Stealth Rocks. And that's about it. And Doug Trio gets rocks, too. So, like, there's, there's a lot of Stealth Rockers, but there aren't a lot of Spikers. And a lot of these guys are, like... Like, Heatran and Bronzong are great Rockers. Yeah. But, um... Bronzong, I think I, I run rocks just about every time. Heatran, you have to be kind of careful about it, though, because sometimes you can get caught in scenarios. Uh, rocks Heatran just isn't, isn't the best, and you don't want to be stuck using Rocks Heatran every game. Yeah, especially for a round one pick, you're going to make that mon, what, you, you, your utility mon? Come on now. Exactly. <laughs> Did you have that shit round one? Also, you're going to get kills with it. We'll say this. There's no reliable ground type here. Oh, Lilligant is your ground type. Shit, I didn't realize Lil Lilligant is your ground type. Your quiver dance. Yeah, people are gonna be able to volt switch all over your team all day long. And it's not gonna be pretty. So honestly, th this team is very strong. It has a lot of potential. It's a very solid, well-rounded team, is how I would is how I would. But it's not without its weaknesses. We just talked about we also just talked about our number six team out accident Tottenham. That's gonna bring us to our number five team, the Scarborough Septiles. Now this is the team everyone was kind of clowning on during the draft. Because... Yeah, Scarborough? Yeah, Scarborough. That's Geo right there. Yeah. All right? He round one picked Spectrier. And everyone's like, wow, that's terrifying. And then round two, Dragapult somehow fell. And he's like, you know what? I'll pick that too. I don't give a damn. And he picked it. And everyone's like, wow, double ghost? How crazy. But honestly... I feel like he patched it up pretty well. Unfortunately, there is a massive, massive, massive hole in this team. 
and that is the speed tiers. Go on. I'm listening. From Tinkaton uh -huh. at 94 uh -huh. to Ting Lu at uh, 45. Oh my god. I believe that's accurate. If, it, if that's not like the exact, then it's like within a couple of speed points. Basically, you can just run almost max bulk on anything under base 100. And you will be completely fine against this team. Which is really, really unfortunate for things like Spectre. Which depends on having things worn down in Dragon Ball. Which depends on having things worn down for off games. Um, and now, this team's going to have to work like double overtime in order to make that happen. It's like to get things worn down for those end games. Good news is, I think this team has pretty solid paths to those end games Because they have... Two of the best hazard setters around, right? Ting Lu is probably like oh. after Glamora, probably the best hazard setter in the format. Good Ting horse. Lu is an incredible Pokemon. It's a PBO favorite. Everyone knows about Good Horse. Good Horse. All right. Something wrong. Good Horse. And then Fortress. Fortress has its has its fair share of haters, and I will say I do hate Fortress <laughs> as a rapid spinner. Ben, this as one's a spiker, for you. I think it's perfectly confident. I think Fortress is a perfectly competent spiker. Now, this team kind of lacks some immediate offensive presence. It's a pretty fat team. It's got Drag Hole for like utility, which is isn't like fat, like it's like utility support, which is which is good on a fat team. There's Ting Lu, which is the epitome of fat. Tinkaton is doing its its fat utility. Fat. Tentacruel can be fat. Mien Shao, it can be doing that pivot regenerator stuff. Our believe is fat. Fortress is fat. Wigglytuff is pretty fat. Yeah. This team is like, it's trying to stick around and wear things down for that Spectre or Endgame, which I think is a pretty mm -hmm. solid game plan overall. Yeah. Um, I, I think I think the double ghost with Dragonhold and Spectre isn't nearly as bad as what it would uh, immediately think. In fact, I think having Spectre as the offensive ghost really frees up Dragonhold to be doing a lot more support utility stuff. It can be it can be spreading status like else and be uh, like will o wisping things. So now they're struggling even more. A mm -hmm. Um It can be getting screens up. It can be pivoting like crazy. It can be disabling things. It can be clicking infestation. It can be dropping dragos for all it cares. <laughs> okay. It can do pretty much anything. Like like, like dragold is really freed up with a spectre. I don't hate it as much as you might initially. Think. Um, yeah, these two months alone, I you, also can, you think... can focus on, and then you could easily lose to a Tinglu or Mian Shao. If you, if you exactly. focus on Dragon Ball Respect, if you get too focused on these two ghost types, will break through my whole team. Infiltrator and just and just spectre your sub. Yeah, well, the Tinglu can out outstall you, will win, <laughs> and Mian Shao will just hit you, regen, and then regen out, come back in, and do it all over again. So, yeah. Uh, when you start. When you think about uh, the shared weaknesses between Spectre and Dragapult, it's just Ghost and Dark. Yep. And Ting Lu is probably the best at resisting both entire. Like I, I really think Ting Lu is like the perfect partner to uh, to have these two with, and I really think it's going to make it a lot easier to uh, to progress. One weakness I think this team does have is uh, its fighting type of choice. Spectre loves, loves, loves having a good fighting type. A really strong fighting type. This is a good fighting and type. Mancho is a good fighting type. Don't get me wrong. It's just not the best. It, it falls flat in a lot of ways. Like if this team had a Gapdos instead, which went undrafted, by the way, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Someone please draft it. Um, yeah. Uh, it would be like it would be way, way, way stronger. Oh, actually, technically, he couldn't pick up Gapdos because he has regular Zapdos, and that's a species clause. Um, anyways. Like, normally Spectre prefers, like, a, a Gapdos or an Iron Hands or an Archief, which is banned in this league, but still, my point stands. Um, Mianxiao's good, don't get me wrong. I love Mianxiao. Just Spectre usually appreciates a different fighting type partner. Our Believe, I think, is an incredible Terra Captain. Uh, I almost said it's slept on, but it's not slept on. It like, people respect this thing. People know about it. Yeah. Um, I think no Fairy or Ground Typing on Our Believe is interesting. Um, but it, it's fine. It, like it's not that big a deal. And it's then Wigglytuff as a 
as a terror as a terror captain is like it's whatever it's there it'll get up rocks one game it'll get up screens it'll wish once and that's it honestly this team it's really just focusing on those um that it's focusing on bulk and longevity and wearing down the opposing team until uh spectre or dragon Ball can win i think this team's going to struggle a lot against a team that has good at hazard control because past that the breakers are going to be like offensive zapdos in mian Zhao, and that's when it starts to get a little bit sketchy and with that we're going to move on to our number four team which is oh. going to be the syracuse snorlax here it is here it is and this the team, team is a Region real team i see su and Zoro, i go yes <laughs> not his and Zoro, not his and Zoro. <laughs> i go yes and I've, Dude, I think we learned from Ben that like Lowland Sandslash is a real mon, also. I feel like assuming Zoroark like, has to be, it has to be okay. Like, it, it can't be bad. Be. I've never seen it pop off. Like, I think its stab moves are just a little bit too weak for it sometimes, but that's whatever. We're going to talk about those first three picks. That's what's going to be scaring you in matchup. <laughs> yeah. How do I break a Thorn T and a Glow King and a Kira? Or how do I withstand the Kira? This has uh, been written all over it. This does have been written all over. You never <laughs> guessed who had, who had a hand making. Oh my god! Something I will say. Three regions. Three hydrapple. There's a hydrapple. Oh right my there. god! A terra hydrapple. <laughs> Jesus right there. Christ! Another favorite there is never enough. No. Oh. Um, one thing I will say about this team is it's kind of fairy weak. Like Glow King is probably the best fairy resist in the game, right? Um, yeah. so like it's not really that fairy weak, and like Alolan Sandslash A isn't that specially bold, B isn't gonna stay resistant fairy anyways because it's Terra. Um, but like with Glowking being the best fairy resist in the game, surely it has some wiggle room with being called so called fairy weak. It's also a tad bit ground weak if like Tornado or uh, if Hydrapple Terra's because then you're only resist at that point is tornadus t um it really becomes iffy because like, like edge quake if hydrapple terrors edge quake is going to run this team it hits everything super effectively at that point except for like swampert which is decent at sponging that stuff and blastoise which is also like fun like okay at sponging it for um i don't know one thing I will point out about this team also is that it can it also looks like it might be a little bit like ice weak or freeze or like freeze dry weak specifically. Yeah. Which to be fair, they have like the second best freeze dry spammer in the game. So like that's not, it's not even that big of a weakness. <laughs> but like bundle could really mess this team up. Like if 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 they can if they would if they could position their bundle to where the, the glow king starts to get chipped then bundle goes on a field day against this team that being said this team is still very 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 strong uh there's a reason yeah. it's number four in our rankings. yeah i kiram incredible pokemon we, we moved it up in points this season because mm -hmm. we respect how dominating it can be sometimes yeah cloaking torn t is the classic matchup uh i suppose it's like a little bit it's a little ghost week. There's an incineroar there, I guess. Fine. Um, for a regen team, it does not have a lot of hazards. It's got rocks from Swampert. It's got spikes from Alolan Sandslash and rocks from Alolan Sandslash. But on the snow team, it wants to be doing that offensive stuff when it comes. And so for a regen team, it's not really getting that chip that it wants to be getting on a lot of guys. Mm -hmm. uh, like passive chip. And so uh, your sources of damage are gonna have to get a little bit creative here when we're when we're talking about it, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. because party like the the pivots on this team are like actually right. You have Chili from Glowkey, like probably the best pivoter in the game. Torn T following right behind with U-turn to chip things down. Uh, does Blastoise get flipped? It kind of be crazy mm -hmm. if it didn't, but it like it's not ringing a bell. It, it does, does get flipped. Turn. Yeah. Okay. But this Blastoise gets flip turn, Zorak gets U turn, Hydrapple doesn't get a pivot move, but like one miss is like fine. Yeah. Incineroar gets parting shot and U turn, mm -hmm. doesn't get one. 
Swampert gets one, and Morgrim gets Parting Shot, too. Mm-hmm. So, a lot of pivoting uses like this. The, pivot, the pivoting is, is like, kind of nutty. Yeah. But that being said, this team is, like, it does have its weaknesses. It, it's, like, a little ground weak if Hydra Apple... It, it's a pretty ground weak if Hydra Apple Terra's. Um, it's very weak if Glowkin gets chipped even a little bit. It can be it can be a little freeze dry week. It's lacking some of the hazard options. In terms of hazard control, it's got Blastoise. And that's pretty much it. In fact, Blastoise feels kinda like dead weight here when there's a whole swamper there to do every everything it's doing. Like, okay, if we look at this team, there are actually two rapid spinners. There's mm-hmm. Sand Slash and there's Blastoise. Yeah. There are two water types, Blastoise and Swamper. Yeah. Now, I'm as big a fan of doubling up on water types as the next one. I'm a very, very large advocate of doubling up. However, Blastoise isn't really doing much of anything, anything that Swamper isn't doing other than like the Shell Smash stuff, but it doesn't really feel properly supported in the Shell Smash on this team. It's, like, it's not really angled towards any of those games because there's not a hazard. There's not. There's a lot of pivot support, I guess, but I don't know. It just feels a little bit out of place. I will... Also, one thing I just noticed. Yeah. Uh, this team is lacking a reliable steel type. Steel yeah. type low and sand <laughs> I guess you can't really call it reliable. The steel type is a low and sand slash, <laughs> and it is not staying a steel type. Uh, that's tough. You kind of want an actual steel type. So maybe if you could drop Blastoise and find an actual Steel type in its place, um, it, things can get uh, maybe like a lot better in that regard. Basically, I think this team just needs a little bit of tweaking to become like a really, really top tier team and patch all those holes. Uh, we were talking to Ben earlier, and we mentioned how Snow is really good. <laughs> now Snow with the Kirim oh, yeah. and the Mons is even better. And if you want to feign the Kirim as a Sui and Zoro, that's even scarier. Morgrim for screens to really set the Mons up. A ton of pivoting, which is amazing. The PBO Goat Glow King. And if you want to get really creative, Torrenty gets Weather Ball. I don't know what you'd use it on. But for another Ice for another <laughs> another Ice move, why, why the fuck not? Oh, and Sand Slash, you've got to really see what this Mon can do. And a Hydrapple that hasn't really been able to show up or really... I guess I haven't seen it show up or show out in like, in like PBO games and hoping Terra Fairy can kind of help it do that. I was for used it one season. Plus with the Intimidate user and in, Incineroar in along a parting shot right into Morgrim. Stops any like setups kind of in their tracks more or less. And with with Ben prep help, if you can get that Syracuse, I don't see how you don't make finals honestly. I mean, this team was just built to to win. <laughs> as long as you don't focus in on just the one little snow thing and then kind of snowball from there, no pun intended. Looking at your <laughs> schedule, I think you can do it. You can at least make playoffs. But as long as yeah, you're comfortable I, with the I team, absolutely, this, this is like a championship team. Play. <laughs> yeah, this is absolutely like, like a championship contender team. Um, this is It's very, very strong. Like, to beat this team, you kind of need to accomplish a very specific set of conditions, which with Regenerator can all be un the blink of an eye. Mm, but with that, I think it's time to move on to our, our number three. And I hate to do this. It's my team, the Charleston Shots. Hey, oh. Talk just through it. This team, this team looks good. The team looks good. I'm really loving the mess for it off the rip. You've got the fan favorite in Volbeat. Well, everyone but Abbott's for its fan favorite Volbeat. Enam T. Empoleon. A Entei getting usage. Another offensive fire type. Not to mention Lando T. Rabbit Spinner Crocodile. A fun, a, a fun Terra in Canto uh, uh, Tauros. And fucking Roaring Moon to rip through anything with it with its Dragon Dark type. I mean, this team just looks fun. I just love Mesprit. Decidueye for Spirits Shackle Snanigans can also be fun. I mean, what, you got one Intimidate user? Two of who can Intimidate? How long Intimidate? Who knows? It might. I'll look it up right now. And, you know, I'll just lie and say it does for the time being. Two Intimidate users, an amazing Iron Bundle Resist, and Napoleon. 
the Sigil I haven't really seen go stupid crazy like that. I just know Spirit Shackle, but among some other stuff, it gets like thousand arrows. That's pretty. Does it get thousand arrows? I could just hello. I could just be lying. AV Mesprit is a fun set to run. I ran it PVO season one. Uh, this one is hella fun. A ton of coverage. Really anything, any occasion. Maybe like the worst out of the three. You know what I'm saying? Maybe the worst out of the three. But. We'll have to see how it goes. Oh my god. And among Volby, I mean, you know, I mean, we we just talked about Syracuse. You know what I'm saying? Hello. Hello. We just sorry talked, about. We just, that. No, you're good. I was I was rambling on about your team. I'm excited to see Anyways. it. I have I I don't know much about Enam T and Decidui and the fun Tauros Terras. Otherwise, I'm pretty familiar <laughs> with with Lando T, Roy okay. Moon, the rest. Enamorous, I'm actually really, really high on, and honestly, most of this team feels a bit more centered around that than it does War and Moon. Honestly, um, like I didn't mean for it for it to happen that way; it just kind of ended up that way. Um, but I feel like Enamorous Therian is going to be one of the most dangerous Terra captains in the format because not only does it threaten most teams with its standard calm mind draining kiss sets, yeah, <laughs> but it's also really, really threatening. Just with specs. Like, I think I ran the calcs it cleanly to it KOs Assault Vest Slow King like every time. I think it's like 60% oh, every time. Shit. <laughs> like, like, if you're not a bulky resist, there's no walling a specs in Amorous. And like we know that with, with an Amorous Incarnate, right? Like that that's what it does. That's why it's so strong. But an Amorous Therian is just the same thing, except now it's slow but bulky. And so with that, it's it's going to be mauling a lot of teams that way but if we're talking about like team composition if there's uh something that's a little bit like out of the ordinary i guess that i would say about it it's that it's uncharacteristically mid heavy like mid tier heavi for uh paldea decks for gen 9 most teams in gen 9 tend to lean towards the uh the the more top heavy side put all of your points into your top tier gets into like a effectively an eight or nine mon roster and then have a, a couple of low tier guys at the end and my team didn't end up shaking out that way which i think is part part of the the weaker end of it because some of these guys i think everyone on the team fills a role but they all like have a pretty equal chance of coming only a couple times and so in that aspect it's like it makes me kind of predictable in like what's going to come and what isn't going to come and I think it can be kind of sketchy in that regard. Like, there's a lot of support and not that much reliable offense. Like, this team, like I've said for a lot of other teams so far, it doesn't let a lot of guys play to their, their full potential sometimes. Like, Entei. Entei really wants to be that offensive guy, but it's, like, one of two fairy resists on the team. And so sometimes it, it might be, like, some weird, bulky Entei set, which is really weird and uncharacteristic and not quite optimal of an Entei to be doing. Um, What's fun? Decidui is get also going to be... Yeah, it doesn't get a lot of usage in PBO. So it'll be nice to change that. But honestly, it would have been nice to have Entei as a Terra Captain, but it just didn't shake out that way. Um... Hazard control, I uh, I know Mug had the opinion that my team is very hazard weak, but I'm not quite sure I agree. Um, I only have one, I, okay, I have three mons that are weak to rock, right? But they none of them are afraid to run boots ever, and I have defog and rapid spin. So I'm not exactly, like, afraid of getting rid of hazards, especially because my team doesn't necessarily revolve around having hazards up. Like, I have one, two three rock setters and then a spike setter uh which like all of them are good at getting rocks up and spikes up respectively but like the, my team isn't, isn't revolving around it it's about hitting hard with stuff like lando and roaring moon and enamorous and cleaning with uh any of those other guys also like, it depends on the matchup you know what i mean yeah um i think tauros really is uh, a demon terra captain i think the terra types are like pretty generically strong on it normal fairy fighting it's like Good that's a that's a great yeah it's, it, it, it's good coverage together it's just how it works terra normal body slams from tauros like just absolutely rip holes in teams without good ghosts without good normal resists 
And like ghosts can't even come in on Taurus anyways because they'll get throat chop. And like you don't have so, a fighting type, but does a team need a fighting type? You know no, I mean? fighting type is like one of the types that's not necessary. <laughs> but uh it's, nice it's still have. very nice to have. Yeah. I, I I'm a fighting's probably my favorite typing to use generally speaking, and I just haven't had one the last couple of seasons, unfortunately. But anyways, if we look at this whole like bottom row of my roster, um the decidui down to Volbeat, they're all kind of like utility-ish, mid-ish picks. And I feel like they're all just kind of, like they're all flexible. They can all do okay. Flexible is not necessarily the right word. Um, but they all they all fit a role on the team. Like Cryogonal's the super spin F spinner guy. It's the it's the backup ice resist. Um it it hits a speed tier. Entei's strong priority, it's a fairy resist, it's, a, it's another decent speed tier. Um, the Sijuai is the fighting immunity, it's the ground resist, it's the it, it's the defogger, it's another piece of pivoting. Mesprit is, is general utility with rocks, T-Wave, trick room healing wish, uh, U-turn knockoff, great coverage, stuff like that. No, like, no, no things that are like crucial to bring every game, but things that are still capable of coming to a lot of games. And then Volbeat is there. Um, partly as an homage to Ben, and partly because um, it's nice to have another ground resist on, on a team like this. Because Enam won't stay as a uh, flying type. Uh, Landorus can, can't be dependent on, neither can Cryogonal. Like, without the recovery, I, I do have three mods that are immune to ground, right? Um, but it's, it's still nice to have that backup. Or I guess four if you count on Amorous. But, so maybe ground, maybe ground isn't, even, isn't even the best reason. But like fighting is a better reason, I think. And also, Prankster with a disruption and T-Wave and speed control is really nice on this thing. Um, basically, this team, uh, the way Mug put it when we talked about it earlier, I, I, I'd like to get her opinion in here about this too. Um, she said like the, the way she compared my team to some of the other teams was uh, a lot of the other teams have some pretty, some pretty glaring, like really large glaring holes in them. Uh, whereas my team has... Maybe it has maybe it has more holes, but the holes are all significantly, significantly smaller and much easier to like navigate and play around on a game to game basis. Like a smart building and smart play will will allow me to outmaneuver a lot of the, weak, the weaknesses that my team has. And so with that, we're gonna move on uh, from me gassing up my team, and we're gonna move on to our number two spot, the Manila Manectrix. It was hard to not put Don at one. That's all I'm saying. Uh, you, you, you kid, <laughs> you flatter me. Anyways, this is Manila Manetrix. Your Fun matchup. Fact. Yeah, th this is my week one matchup. Very scary team, by the way. <laughs> Number two versus three. Uh, fun fact: this guy picked his team in grace. Yep, he picked his team in grace, and he got number two. Big ups to you, Carl. It's my understanding. I think. Uh, I think Ben also helped make this team. Ben's yes. got his fingers in every team. Yeah, he does. Can't help himself. <laughs> um, anyways, it's got Bundle Latios, which, if I remember correctly, like if I'm if if my memory is telling me correct, uh, Bundle Latios is like a pretty pretty common like actual offensive core together. Um, I personally think the the two of them should, are on Fraud Watch, especially Latios, uh, but. Together, I think it, it definitely like more than makes up for their individual shortcomings. Bundle is one of the most oppressive mons on matchup, like in Gen 9. Mm -hmm. And Latios uh, is just such a nuke with that 130 special attack Draco Meteor. Uh, it really is like incredibly, it's a really strong breaking cleaning duo. And then Meowskarada falling to round six, or not, not round six, to Grace, because this was a Grace team. Yep. Oh, great. Crazy, by the way. Um, Another thing, before before you go on, the two teams Ben had a hand in, the Valiants and the Manila Manetrix, just so happened to both and have Terra and Syracuse, but for the point of this, both have Terra <laughs> Seruledge. Interesting. <laughs> yep. Uh, Terra Seruledge is something I want to talk about about that, is I think Terra Seruledge is one of, if not the strongest Terra Captains in the format, without a doubt. Right next to probably Zarude and... Oh, I can't even think of the other one. It doesn't matter. It's probably something in 120. I think Gyarados is probably up there, but no one, no one picked it anywhere. So, yeah, no whatever. Huh. 
Um, normally with Terra Sarah Ledge, you're trying to lean into weak armor. You get those sword stance boosts, you get the speed boosts, and you just win games. However, both of these Terra types are pretty clearly leaning, leaning into Flash Fire, which is an interesting choice. I feel like I feel like having one Terra type towards Flash Fire is fine, good even, but having both of them is kind of whatever. Ground and rock resist, right? I learned that from Probo Pass. Ground and fighting resist. Uh, yes, fighting. Sorry, <laughs> rock eats butter. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm learning. <laughs> in in my in my limited experience with Sarah Ledge, my understanding is that Bug on Sarah Ledge is more of a ladder tech to like beat Great Tusk. Um, oh. Because now you resist its dual stabs, knock off is whatever towards you, ice spinner is neutral. Um, like basically, it's 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 resisting what flying resists while being neutral to what it's not what, what flying is not neutral to. But in a draft setting, I'm not convinced Terra Bug is the best thing for Sarah Ledge. Uh, I think Fairy would have been very, very nice. Uh, I think Water could have been really good. Water, especially because Bundle currently is your your water type, and it's not a bulky water, obviously. Reggie Steel. So, yeah, Reggie Steel. We'll get to that. Reggie Steel <laughs> is great, by the way. Um, anyways, Sarah Ledge is going to be very, very uh, threatening on most matchups, although I think it's going to be... Uh, a little bit worse than its maximum potential just because of Terra types. Sylveon, great defensive Pokemon, and I think it pairs incredibly with the Registeel standing right next to it. Mm -hmm. Because Sylveon gets to click Wish, and then gets to switch right into Registeel on all of those poisons and steals. And then Registeel gets right back up to full. Not to mention, this is Terra Registeel. I yeah. think it's the first Terra Reggie still we've seen in PBO in a good while now. Yeah, it's been, it's been a minute. Now I'm going to tell you, uh, as someone who's had a little bit of a little bit of experience prepping against this matchup, Sylveon and Reggie Steel is damn hard to break. <laughs> that shit's hard to break. All right, like they don't care what you throw at it. They'll they'll swallow it. They'll heal it off, and they'll hit you back. It's not easy to do that. Like, this team is very defensively strong. It's very offensively strong. But it has its weaknesses. Let's start with one. This team has a speed gap, like many of the other uh, team, we, teams we've talked about in Sunset. It goes from 110 with Latios and Jumpluff, and then after that, there's nothing until Glamora at, like, 86. Oh I think God. 86. Maybe 86. I don't remember. Memora 86, yes. Um, so what that means is that you can run bulky against Latios and Bundle, which makes it, and Miascarada, which makes it a lot easier to actually wall those guys. Or not even wall them, check them at least. Um, it's just going to make it a lot harder for uh, Manila to actually be breaking a lot of these things. Glamora, though, is a very nice Pokemon on this team, especially because your hazard control is Donphan. Uh, Donphan's spinning away hazard instead of defogging, which is very nice. It also, it also helps that Donphan is one of the most reliable spinners in the format. Uh, Glamora also has the opportunity to be very uh, offensively inclined with Rock Polish Meteor Beam sets. Uh, I just This team is it's very, very solid. If you can look past the, uh, the speed tier issue... Some of the, the general neutralities to some typings, like uh, basically the moment Reggie Steel Terra's fairy types become a lot more threatening unless you have some sort of a bulky Glamora, um, which isn't very common. It's usually either a suicide lead or that that uh, that offense the offense inclined thing. Um, so yeah, fairy types can be really annoying into this team, which I've been saying a lot tonight. Um but I guess Sarah Ledge also resists it, so it's not the end of the world. I think Vika Volt's an interesting choice on this team. Especially no Terra, Vika Volt. <laughs> That's true. I'm thinking of it more, more from a sticky web perspective. Mm, because okay. Bundle... Bundle is... Uh, it's outspeeding everything already, right? Like, if it wants to outspeed stuff, it'll be Scarf or Booster Energy. It doesn't really need webs to be 
I was speeding, guys. Same same boat with Miascarada. Like it appreciates it, but it usually outspeeds everything in the matchup anyways. Latios appreciates it. Sarah Ledge is usually trying to double that speed. And Glamora it, like sometimes appreciates it. And that's like it. It's like this team isn't isn't the most appreciative of webs. And so, like, at that point, it's just it's weird. I don't know. Maybe to not be Cerulean should rely on weak armor. Maybe he yeah, just has to be him naturally. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like weak armor is just infinitely better. Not infinitely better, but it's a lot better than yeah. Blackfire most of the time on Sarah Ledge. Anyways, there's a very clear reason why this team is number two. I haven't talked about Jump Bluff because it's not worth talking about. It is here because he was out of points, and that's how he wanted it, and that is perfectly fine. They end up. Without further ado, we're going to get to our number one team in the Sunset Power Rankings, and that is the Tokyo Teddy Ursas. Let's take a look at this team. Now, we look at this team, and we're all thinking the same thing. Yeah. All right? It gives me great joy to see a Polyrath on the, the number one team in Power Rankings. Turk words out my mouth. Yep. Polyrath is an absolute dominant force on the field at all times. Wins every game. It's just incredible. It's a catch-all piece. Um, no, but for real, though, Terrapagos is a mod that is very... I believe they talked about it in the other power rankings. It's a mod that's really shooting up the ranks in the, the general draft scene as a whole, not even just PBO. And people are, people are round one picking it now, and they're building great teams around it, and this team is a great example of it. Terrapagos. Uh, what does Terrapagos usually want? It wants some hazard control teammates, so it doesn't, doesn't always have to worry about hazards. Boom, there's a Cinderace right there. It's court changing all those hazards away. Mm -hmm. Then after that, Kuma's like, all right, fine. I'll get the best Terror Captain in the format. I yeah. debated with the best <laughs> Terror Captain in the format. Boom, it's a rude. What Terror types do I want? I want Electric for neutrality against things and Poison because it's really good defensive typing. Boom, now I can set up on anything. All right, after that, what are we getting? Metagross? Boom, great Steel type. Great Rocker. Great uh, priority moves. A great Bulk. It does everything it's a metagross we know what it does and metagross has only gotten better in gen 9 because it now has access to three new moves that are very yeah. very nice for it which heavy slam psychic fangs knock off all i'm gonna say why the hell does this guy get psychic fangs where are his teeth he opens his mouth what mouth mega metagross opens his mouth okay whatever fair enough <laughs> we'll move on glide score I might get some flack for this. I think that guy's kind of on fraud watch. I feel like he feels a little bit too passive sometimes. And on this team in particular, the hazard pressure is uh, low enough where it's mostly just going to be spamming spikes every game. That's what it's here for. It's here to get a passive. It's here to U-turn. Here to be a ground answer. Here to be here to be an electric answer. Like, just be a ground type. But I just worry Gliscor is a little bit too passive sometimes. I know Abbotsford's going to be like, bro, shut up. Glyscore is the best thing ever. I'm like, okay, you, you can you, you can say that, but it won't change my mind. There's a Pheasant Dippity right here. I'm oh, a yeah. big Pheasant Dippity enjoyer. If that thing could hit Steel Types better, it would actually be a crazy, crazy good mod. What Pheasant Dippity, Pheasant Dippity provides for this team is, is a, it's a Poison type and it's a Fairy type. Like, yeah, no shit, it's a Poison type and a Fairy type. Yeah, but it's uh, Got it means it. it's blanking Dragon moves. All right, it's blanking fairy moves. It's like together, that's really, really important. This thing gets recovery, gets roost, it gets U-turn, and it is spamming status as it goes. Just by clicking U-turn, it is toxicing the other team. That is really nice to whittle things down for the likes of Terrapagos, for, for, for the likes of Zerud, for the likes of Cinderace, for the likes of Thunderous. Speaking of Thunderous, I'm a big Thunderous enjoyer. Mm -hmm. That thing is very fun, very nice. Very nice mixed attacker, too. You don't usually see the mixed sets, um, but its attack is 115, and it gets defiant. So basically, this team is like, you move from one Mon to the next, and you see the Mons are all very strong. Thunderous is very good. We move on to the next one, Miss Magius. That's a Terra Captain I used last season. Yeah. In fact, Kumi picked the same Terra types I picked last season. They're good. The best. I um, imagine it's not going to come as often as Minus Magius did because he has a whole terror as a root there. But 
This Maggie's is a very, very good ghost type. 105 speed is a nice speed benchmark to be hitting. Um, and it's just, it hits hard when you start throwing on choice specs and Terra Ghost or Terra Fairy. And it's just getting all of these multipliers on multipliers on multipliers. And it's hitting incredibly hard. Next, the last important Pokemon on this list. Yeah. The, um, the last probably the most important Pokemon though. on the team. Yeah, Agreed. like I alluded to. Is Polyrath. Now, most people don't know what Polyrath does. And that's because mo most people haven't used them. I have used Polyrath. They're too afraid to use Polyrath. I have to say, they are too afraid. They're not good enough to no, use Polyrath. They don't understand. Kuma is good enough to use Polyrath. And that's why he explicitly asked for my permission to pick Polyrath. But, are you for real? Um, I can't remember if he asked permission. He's like, yo, are, are you looking at this? And I'm, I'm not looking <laughs> at it. Um, it was either that or he asked like legit, legitimately recommend, which I absolutely do, by the way. Like all, all jokes and gassing it up aside, I think it is a fantastic low point mon because what you're fighting is a surprisingly competent defensive typing. Uh, resist U turn, resist rock, resist dark. And then you get most, if not all, of the resistances that water normally gets. I don't remember if it overlaps it. I don't think it does. Um, not to mention, Polyrath's bulk, that shit's real. It's like 90, 90, 90 or something. Polyrath is 90, 95, 90, actually. Ooh. Like, that is, that's good bulk. Uh, yeah. Not to mention, it gets, like, really good utility moves. It gets Encore. It gets Knock Off. It gets Baton Pass. It gets Bulk Up. Ooh. It gets Rain Punch. It gets Circle. Nice. I, I can keep going. Haze. It gets Haze. Ever. It gets uh, Belly Drum. Not to mention, it gets, it gets, Really nice uh, coverage too to just chunk random things. Um, it's vacuum wave. Come on, yeah, it doesn't. It does, I never use that myself. The whirlpool, but, <laughs> whirlpool shenanigans. It gets a lot of like random coverage to hit things that think they're safe on it. Uh, like you can click poison jab to catch a fairy that's trying to switch in on earthquake to catch uh, like fire, not fire dice. What else would would come in on the ground with polyrath? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, I, I run, I run Earthquake plenty of times. You run Close Combat, run, run Liquidation. Uh, it just, it gets so many moves, and it gets, its bulk is so reliable that you can bring it to so many matchups and just tailor it to exactly what you need it to do. And it, it can check multiple things in one game. And with that bulk, it's really, really nice. Now, I think I just talked longer about, about Polyrath than any of the other mods on this team. I mean, there's Hisui and Sligu. Um, is that Mon real? No, yeah, but okay. it's there as like, it it's it's a dragon type, I guess. <laughs> and um, so it's really complimentary. And like, that okay, core. to be fair, for for like a twenty point mon, it's like probably the most real twenty point on the list. Yeah. Um, it was so like, like, it's not take, bad. Take a ton of it's shit. fine. Maybe it'll come to a game, but honestly, I don't see it. Um, now if we're talking about weaknesses to this team, it's. I forgot what we had because I didn't actually write things down. Absolutely. One of the ones that um, I, that we did talk about was, as much as it pains me to say it, having Polyrath as your only bulky water <laughs> is not ideal. Um, uh, you, you never want that as your only bulk. Although I'm, I think it's a lot more workable than people would expect. This team, if uh, what was it? Let's put it like, like if, if Metagross gets chipped and Polyrath doesn't come to a game, which is like totally reasonable common scenario to happen, uh, ice moves start to look pretty scary. Uh, yeah. Pheasant Dippy will probably swallow them in that case. Uh, Cinderace still resists. So mm -hmm. like, it's not the end of the world. And like if Dropkos' Terra Shell is still intact, it's like mostly fine. Like, here's how I, how I, I would put this team. <clears throat> this team is not flashy. No. There's no stereotypical big guy, just like I said about Tottenham, Tottenham's team, I believe. Yep. Um, but this team, if we're, if I'm going to use the same illusion, my, my team, uh, if my team had a bunch of little holes that were playable around, and then some other teams had had some much had less, much larger holes that were harder to play around, Kuma's team is like a team with only a couple of really small holes, and they're all like. You, you can play around yeah. all of them. Very navigatable. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, his speed tiers are good. I don't have them listed off the top of my head, but I think Cinderace is like 116. 
Uh, Thunderous is like 111. This Maggie is 105. Cinderace 119. 119. Okay, that's perfect. Thunderous I think is also 105. <clears throat> Zerud so like is after, 105. Yeah. After Zerud, it starts to get a little bit sketchy because you go from like 105 to like whatever Pheasantipity or whatever Terrapagos is. 85. Um, 85. Yeah, so like 105 to 85 is like not great, but it's not bad. Right. Yeah. I mean, oh, wait, pe pe never mind. Peasant Divinity is 99. I forgot. And Gladiscore is 95. Like, it's, that, too. You are correct. So, I guess speed tiers are fine. Speed tiers are, like, perfectly fine. Metagross um, 70. Suin Slagoo with, like, 40. So, I guess I would 70. say, if there is something I would I would say, um, like, the breakers are, like, okay. But, okay, the breakers are good. But like Cinderace isn't always one. Okay, it, it, it's one of those issues where like there's nothing that can like all, always fill the role of, break, of a breaker. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. um, which is like a, a very small nitpick. Like that's a very very small thing. Basically, this team it has a lot of a. Uh... Oh, I see one more thing. Another perfectly reasonable scenario. We'll say Polyrath doesn't come. And we'll say Slagoo doesn't come. Very reasonable scenario. If the rude Terra's, then you're very, very weak. That's it. <clears throat> that that's like a weakness that exists. Um, this is also a team where, like, in terms of natural bulk, there's nothing that's like crazy, crazy unkillable bulky. So if you just hit it hard enough, things will get through. But you have to be like getting those things in that position can be a team like this. And another thing to put in perspective, uh, just, you know, any prediction on the season, how the season will go. Kuma's schedule, I look at it, and just from face value, six out of those eight teams are playoff teams in my head. You decide which two aren't, but six of them for sure are. And two of them are. That's all I'm saying. I look at the schedule, that is not an easy schedule. I look at the players. You have the runner-up. Uh, Nico isn't isn't a slouch. Snow Point and Salt Lake are both wild cards. I've known nothing about a champ in Tottenham. The promo another promotion from Neon Dawn, who is easily a a, a former Gazer player, come down to, to rain hell on on Sunset and Syracuse, which is Ben's team. So this schedule is not easy. When six out of the eight are players we know and they're good, and then two wild cards. Well, yes, they're Kuma's friends, but. They're wild card players, and who knows how they'll show up. And that's the scariest part is not knowing. Yeah, absolutely. Look at this uh, but like honestly, if, if there's a team, if, if there's a team in this division that stands a chance against a schedule like this, it's Kuma's. Yeah, <laughs> it's built, and we will see if he's built for it. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if he if he lasts under the pressure, though. Mm. Well, right, and I think with that, that wraps up the sunset power rankings. It, it was a long one. Thank you for yeah. bearing with us. Yeah. We will I will make sure to edit the Toronto Tottenham fiasco. <laughs> <laughs> the Thank seven and six. <laughs> and everyone, hope you enjoy. And whatever comes out next comes out next. Bye bye. <laughs>